Oh, welcome everybody. The drinker is here and he's joined this evening by the long man himself, Mauler. Um, and as is going to be joining us from Heel versus Babyface in a minute or two. I think he's off pissing or something. Uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to tell it like it is. That's what he's up to. Um, but yeah, like, thank you very much for joining me, man. I know you guys had to like take your your super chat catch up stream down to the wire to try and get into this. <laughs> <laughs> as, pe as people in chat will know, it's like, my life seems to be streaming a lot lately. I pop up all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, God, I, I only told you about this like a couple hours before we were doing it. It was just like, oh, yeah, I'm doing this this uh, stream with Az about Predator. You want to be there? And you're like, yes! Uh, Predator! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> One of my best favorite experiences of first watching movies with my dad was Predator. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was just saying there that, you know, when I was a little kid and like, you know, everybody had watched Predator, like when they were like eight, nine years old, like obviously way before they should, but everyone just had parents who didn't give a fuck back then. Um, and so you'd always get it on VHS or whatever. And uh, yeah, we were, we were loving it. We were just like fucking going to the nearest woods or park or whatever and playing at the predator like one kid had to be it. everybody else was like dutch and blaine and billy and poncho and stuff it was great fun um yeah we didn't actually get our arms blown off or anything in real life but uh it's still good fun to play but yeah it was just one of those movies that always stuck with me and you know it's it's become like one of the most quotable films of all time i think most of which i don't think we can even say on youtube now yeah because like the thing with this movie for me was because I, I think I've said this before, but just like I knew about all the the action movies as a kid, and I was enjoying them. Commando, especially, I'll never forget watching that too. Fucking top gun, <laughs> and I just remember my dad was kind of like, "This one's a bit different." I was like, "Okay," and then I was just like getting my action saved up, and then when the predators start killing people, I I legit remember just being like, "What am I? What what is happening? No, like what is this? what?" This is the thing, right? If you were to just try and explain it in like one or two sentences to someone who'd never seen it and never heard of it before, you know, you'd have to go along the lines of, okay, it's about this team of like big burly guys who get sent into the jungle and then they get hunted by an invisible alien that starts shooting them all. And then the last remaining guy has to fight it with like a bow and arrow. And, and you know, and it just sounds dumb as fuck, but yep. like when you actually see it play out, it's just glorious. Like it's it's so well crafted, and I think you know this is something we were talking about just before we went live. That you know, as as much as it's just a great fun action movie with like a, a shit ton of testosterone and and the great one liners you expect from an eighties action flick, it's actually a really well put together movie in its own right. Yeah, not just the script, um, but like all levels of production. I think they're really going all out with this one. They tried their asses off. They took this very seriously. The uh, little like trivia, there's loads of trivia about it, but the fact that Arnie was the reason that we ended up with the iconic Predator movie monster, which is one of the most famous and impressive movie monsters in history. Yeah, uh, I was going to talk about this. What I'll do is I'll bring Az in because he's here as well. Hello, sir. Hi. How was your piss, <laughs> mate? Did you have a good piss? Yeah. <laughs> I had a good piss and then I had to take a phone call. Sorry. Uh, it's uh, okay, man. Um, yeah, was, like, I, I'm sorry that you, you, you've you spent like 23 hours today streaming. Um, I, well, I mean, I was up at seven and then I was in the office at about half seven and then I watched Batwoman and then I did the, <laughs> bat, then I did the Batwoman review and then I uploaded that. And then I uh, had to watch two episodes of Hawkeye. No, sorry. Then I watched Predator because I wanted to, you know, it's been a little minute since I'd, I'd seen it. So I wanted to just refresh, you know, just refresh. I've seen it so many times, but, you know. So I watched Predator. Uh, then I had to watch two episodes of Hawkeye. Then I did a video on Hawkeye. And then when that was done, it was literally time to go into the Super Chat Square Up stream. So I went into that. <laughs> And then I just had to have a piss. <laughs> uh, after that, God, you're so self-indulgent. I know. This is like one uh, per day. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> no, I figured as well, like because we, we were talking about doing this, and um, you know, with all the absolute garbage that you put yourself through, like you watch Batwoman on a regular basis. You're now watching Hawkeye. You've been watching Cowboy Bebop. Oh. I thought. What can what can I offer to Az that will make his <laughs> life a little bit better? <laughs> it's like Predator. Will, Predator will sort you out, son. Well, 
Here's I a question. Shotgun. Do you guys know anybody that thinks Predator is a bad film? No, I don't know anyone. I don't. Uh, I, I used to, but they've all been taken care of. <laughs> 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 no, like I wouldn't want to know anybody that thinks this is a bad film. I mean, damn, it's just I, I don't even know how where you would begin um by criticizing it. Like we were just saying there, as you know, you've got all of the elements um of, of a great eighties action movie in its own mm. right. You know, the the mission in behind enemy lines to you know get in, to infiltrate this big compound and rescue the hostages. But then it turns out into this crazy, like, um, survival horror situation where they get hunted by this unseen threat. And then it devolves into, like, a survival um, fight to the death between the last man who's left and the predator. You know, all of these things. But it, it switches gears from one, one genre of movie to the next just seamlessly. It makes it so easy and it's so well crafted. It does so much in, in such a short space of time. And it takes itself seriously. Mm. This is what's great about it. it. It's not pretentious or anything, mm. but it, it makes it very clear right off the bat. This isn't a comedy. You're not meant to laugh at this or anything. This this is a serious threat. Um, and it just does it so well. It builds up the Predator so well as an antagonist. Like, all of these things are and just so well accomplished. It's one of my candidates for, you know, like, subversions become a dirty word thanks to Ryan Johnson. It's like, yeah. this is actually how you do it. <clears throat> But um, if, you, if you went into this film not knowing anything with the title of Predator, and then one of the first things that you're dealt with is, oh, we're taking a group of um, well-trained military soldiers into uh, a jungle to rescue some hostages, then you'd be like, okay, right. So uh, you're, you could interpret it as you're the Predators who are going in to take care of business, or the Predators are the people who have taken the hostages uh, and you can think of it as quite a, just an you know a normal sort of like actiony movie in in the uh, jungle. But no, uh, the, f the first scene is like the spaceship dropping off the the pod and stuff. So you're just like, hmm. That's a controversial one because I'll be honest with you. Like I I think that was a late addition, and I think it was mandated more by the studio than the director. I think you could have quite easily got away with not putting that in, and yeah. I think it might have made oh, you for a stronger could movie. Get away with it, yeah. Um. um there's value to it to a degree just to put you slightly on edge about what the fuck this film's going to be as opposed to going in blind. There's, it's hard to say whether or not it's a, I would say, worse or better as a choice. I think I'd prefer without, but I can mm. see value with it being there. I mean, they do, they do say, I think Dylan says and Max says at certain points, this is unearthly. So the you know they they themselves are telling us that whatever this is this isn't come from this isn't well, homegrown. Yeah, I mean you right. get different perspectives on it because um, Anna, the 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 sort of spy that they capture, mm. um, talks about like when she was a, a little girl and they would find local men from their village who had been killed by this thing and skinned alive and and all that stuff, uh, and they they would they give it a name they called it the demon who makes trophies of men. So they've almost got like a spiritual view of it, like it's right, something right. supernatural. Um, it's the same with Billy as well, that he he's mm. almost views this as like some demon that's coming after them. Um, whereas I think Dylan's a little bit more pragmatic and he, he keeps wanting to believe that it's just um, enemy troops that are fucking with them. Um, and he's, he's one of the last ones to come around to what this thing might really be. But then he, he ultimately, yeah, he sees it as, yeah, it's, it's, you know, much more like a physical thing that they can grapple with, I suppose. Um, I think there's a fair reflection when you think about the point the movie's making in, in wider aspects, that uh, the Predator is hunting us as humans because it's so more advanced and it gets thrill out of it, but like the opening story, it's like the power... If you remember all the opening shots of um, you see the helicopters, the Humvees, all the weapons, all the lads getting out, like super strong, it's just like, look at the power here. And yeah. they're all hunting down this village. Like, we are POV. We're like, we are the power. We know what's going on. We know their limits, and we're going to destroy them. Predator's doing the same thing to us. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it builds it builds up the team really effectively. Like, Because um, mm -hmm. obviously the point of this movie is that it, it starts out as your kind of typical big, beefy 1980s action flick. You've got a bunch of, like, the biggest fucking guys you've ever seen. Loads of guns. 
um, you know, and they are they know their business. These, this is an elite team that's sent in to the worst of the worst situations. Yeah. Um, and so it builds them up as a as a credible threat to other humans, and then suddenly they're grappling with this entity that they they can't even understand. They don't understand how they can't see it, how it moves around. It 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 can avoid their traps. It can see them you know through their their heat signatures um it's an entirely different way of fighting um and what i love and this is something that i really appreciate in in well-written films like this is when the characters actually make smart intelligent decisions um to counter the threat that they're up against like these guys when they begin to realize that they're being hunted by something they fall back on their military training and they try Mm. and counter it um in the way you would counter you know, a human adversary, they, they lay out booby traps for it, thinking that they can, they can trap it that way, or they can kill it with claymore mines or whatever. Um, and it's only later that they begin to realize it's moving through the trees. And so it doesn't, it doesn't obey the normal rules of warfare that they're used to. Um, and so they, they begin to work from that perspective. That's when Dutch comes up with the idea of all these traps that can ensnare it, you know, and it, it almost succeeds, you know, again, that they are, countering the threat as they begin to understand it which i think is is it's just really good to see yeah there's a really cool aspect there that the the predator is so advanced it can account for stuff like claymores or um assorted high technology traps but it can't for stuff that's like stone age level or higher it's just like it's yeah. too low tech that the predator has no understanding of it at all yeah which yeah it's cool uh, cool weakness to have and it makes sense but it's a, it's a great i mean it, one of the greatest visuals i thought was um when uh when arnie when they've set all the traps and they're all waiting and then he he just moves forward to tr- try and see if he can see you know mm. this this thing and then he, when he decides to kind of no and he turns around and then the the net goes yeah. up because he <laughs> just he just stalked right behind him without anyone knowing i think that's one of the greatest sort of <gasps> Kind of like, yeah, uh, yeah it's, one of those, it's a scene where you can really interpret it. It could have been the predator was standing the whole time watching them. Mm. The predator, he walks past the predator, and then the predator goes for a kill shot and walks into the trap. It's the kind of shit that I don't know about you guys. Whenever they show long shots of the forest and they zoom, and you're just staring, like, can you see any shimmers? Can you yeah, see where yeah, it is? Yeah. Where is it? It's just like, oh, it's a great way to set tension. I love the, uh, the effect, the cloaking effect on the predator as well, because it was done. You know, clearly with not very advanced technology, and I mm-hmm. think it's effectively just a green screen. So instead of the character being against a green screen in that form in the background, the character itself is the green screen. Um, and it, when it moves against the jungle, they can then just superimpose jungle footage behind it. And so what you get is this, just this weird distorted humanoid shape that moves through the the, the jungle, and particularly when it's um, when it's moving quickly. Uh, I, I I don't know. There's just something kind of weird and disturbing about it that I think just works really well because it's a long time before you actually see the predator revealed. It's it's always cloaked and it's just this weird um, unknown kind of form coming after people. Uh, I just think that's great. Like keeping yeah, that unknown the, threat. The, one of the first good looks <laughs> any of the characters get, I think, is, is Dylan, right? When he sees it after that part we were just talking about, it uh, it reveals itself for about a second and he's just like blown away yeah. by it because it, the eyes the eyes go. well yeah he's it, the um, whole suit because uh it's shield like sh- uh frazzles for a moment and it reveals the whole thing ah yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah because, that's still in yeah because <clears throat> it, it it wounds um poncho i think and then while they're tended yeah. to him like it's a dylan that just sees it um yeah so that, that's pretty cool um and yeah, I think you could argue from that scene that it clues into like these guys have caught on and they're using stuff now that I don't know what the fuck that net was, but like I need to be more careful. Um, and that I think plays into that that big old payoff where Arnie's going to get it with those uh, like spikes. Mm. And yeah. then the predator come very cur- curiously on, just looks at it. Yeah, I'm right here. Give me, come yeah, on, come on, do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Iconic. <laughs> right, yeah, and yeah, I just I love the moment where it uh it curiously looks at the spikes and then mm. feels them, and it's like this is a yeah, fucking yeah, trap. You, <laughs> like, well, you know, what's great is you can totally see what's going through its head. It's like, yeah, you're just gonna you're gonna you're fucking with me here, pal, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, and it just it kind of looks up 
and then looks back at Dutch and then looks up again and it just fucking gets up and goes round. <laughs> the music's great in that moment as well because it feels triumphant and then he moves around and we're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. I mean, you, um, you know, we were just saying there, um, and I think you were halfway through talking about it more, um, that Arnold's actually responsible for the Predator looking the way it does. Um because I think it was him who brought in Stan Winston to yep. to kind of redesign the Predator. Um, His connection that was made through Terminator, obviously. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and, and thank God he did, because holy <laughs> shit, the original um, concept that they had for it. Have I, I've, got, um, yeah. I've got a little bit of footage. The Jean-Claude Van Damme version. Yeah, I've got a little bit of footage that I can show you. Uh, I'll just kill the sound on it. Uh, give me a second. Uh, let me just mute it. So, this this is what it was originally going to look like. Uh, In hold on, I'll bring it forward. Isn't that, it's not quite. That's how it looked when it was going to be like given the the effects and stuff. There is a better image, isn't there, of a kind of, like one that would be with yeah. The other, there you uh, go. Mm. So that that was that was what it was going to look like because the reason you're seeing that big fluorescent orange thing is because they like I say they had to kind of green screen it for the cloaking yeah. effect, uh, and so you can't put a green suit against the jungle because it's green already so they right. had to put like you know bright red um but it gives you an idea of the general shape um and i'll, I'll see if i can put it forward a little bit to where you see van damme yeah so they, they brought in jean claude van damme so that he could he could play as this thing and you so you, you see him there N not not great uh i think there's more of him yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, it, the story of this is great because they brought in Van Damme um, on the idea that this thing was going to be really fast and agile and, and he thought, great, you know I'm going to get to fly kick Arnold Schwarzenegger motherfuckers um, <laughs> not knowing that he was going to be wearing this, this costume most of the time and he thought that this was going to be the actual costume rather than the, the shot that we saw earlier um, so already he was getting antsy about it, and then they said, no, no, it's going to be like a cloaking device, so it's just going to be invisible most of the time. And so he was pissed off because suddenly he realized he was basically just going to be playing a special effect yeah. in this movie. It's like, what, why why would I do this when I'm already like taken off as a, a star? Uh, and so <laughs> uh, he basically quit. And I think there was, there was a bunch of other problems as well. Like The suit was really hot and uncomfortable. Mm. And he couldn't move properly in it. Um, and you know, you can see how shit it looks. Um, yeah, and that that that's kind of <laughs> that's what you've got. And that's the thing, the non <laughs> the non like orange version. I don't think it looks like the worst thing ever. The the, the top tier design of this vision, but it's, to me, it's just way too generic. Uh, yeah, I see like, what they're trying to get with the with the um uh, the agility on it. Um, but uh, no, it, it is very generic. Um, but uh, the the redo, holy shit! Yeah, now that's iconic. I mean, the, the Predator is just that's part of what's so powerful about this this movie. When you first see it, it makes your brain go off in so many different directions in terms of like, what is this thing? Why does it have all the things it has? What they, I mean, what they um, did initially. Well, the the first thing that they did, which was really smart, was they obviously got rid of Van Dam, who's only like five foot eight or something he's not a big guy arnold would have towered over him even with that stupid rubber head on the top of the, the outfit um and they got in kevin peter hall who i think mm. is pushing for seven feet this mm. guy's massive and so they put the predator suit on him suddenly you've got this monstrous yeah. like, creature that towers over arnold who makes him look small you know this guy who's just you know, obviously a big bodybuilder um so they did that and yeah, you've got that great redesign for the the Predator, the, the face and everything. And I think apparently it was James Cameron who who suggested yeah. like the mandible things, like where the mouth just kind of splits apart at the bottom, because he was working with Stan Winston just briefly on it, um, and just made the suggestion like put mandibles on that that face um, so that it splits apart at the bottom. Uh, and he's like, yeah, it's not a bad idea that. And so yeah, you get that great iconic look to the Predator. We got um, that just the way that the skin looks, the dreadlocks, the yeah. like it's almost like tribal gear, but then high tech that's attached to it, and then just select mm -hmm. pieces of armor, the bone I'll necklace. I'll see if I can 
Um, get a nice yeah, shot. Yeah, let's see if I can get it's it. It's like a combination of so many things at once, it really comes across as go. an alien. Yeah. Like, it's. Uh, <laughs> it's I, I know this is dumb, right? But if you look closely, the right eye kind of uh, it kind yeah, of is pointing yeah. the wrong way. A bit cockeyed, but <laughs> in the same. I mean, to, I'm, I'm not even bullshitting. You, I see that, and that to me that looks like a creature. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It doesn't look like a a, a, a um, you know a studio designed costume. It, it actually looks like a creature. The skin is just so good. Um, you know, the, the 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 way that everything moves on the face. Uh, that just looks like a legit creature to me. It doesn't look it, like a, a puppet. Is, well, not a puppet, but a costume. It's crazy. No, the, anima the animatronics on this are incredible. Like, it must have been, like, so many, like, motors and, and little servos and stuff inside this. Because, like, all, all the mandibles move independently. Even, like, mm. the, the skin around the, the sort of nose i guess even though there isn't really a nose on it that kind of wrinkles and moves as well like it's all just um yeah it's very natural looking yeah um, and like you say it just it looks like a creature and it's mm. you know it okay it's it's roughly in the shape of a human head you know it's got two eyes and a mouth um, and mm -hmm. it's it's humanoid shaped but like it's so alien that um yeah you can absolutely believe this is a this is an alien creature um so yeah i just think it's fantastic looking they couldn't mm. have done better with this. I'm almost uh, certain that Predator wouldn't have lasted anywhere near as long as it would have culturally, if not for the look of this creature. Yeah. Well, no, just it's, just it's imagine not, again, yeah. if they say they had gone for the the Van Dam type creature with just the big rubber head on it and stuff, it, it would have it would have got laughed at at the cinema. Yeah. Uh, best case scenario, like it would have just been a, a goofy monster that would have let the movie down. Whereas when you see this fucking thing, it's it's just perfect it's the perfect um, payoff to to all of this mystery um throughout the film and by the way you can say this much about alien as well as a design and the terminator actual like robot design it's just like man i miss these sort of so impactful designs that that are not even necessarily because that's not even the script right it's just how they look yeah but but uh oh it's been a while since we've had anything like that and they just keep getting not to bring down this conversation, but you know, anyway. the, pre the Predator, it's like you have the two Predators in that film. One is the classic, and it's with a suit, and the new one is this big CGI mess, and it kills the original one. And it's just yeah. like, fuck off. <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck off. But you got, you got Whammon Predator coming now. Yeah, Good. Prey. That, I think we're calling that, yeah. That'll save uh, the franchise. <clears throat> That's just... I Cheers! It just, it just needs, yeah, fucking cheers to that. <laughs> oh, and cheers to everyone in America who's tuned in, because I know it's Thanksgiving over mm. there, and I, I, I know you would much rather be with your families, having a nice <laughs> talk about politics over the, the, the oh, turkey. God. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you're with us instead. <laughs> chin chin. <laughs> mm. Yeah, gobble, people gobble. are mentioning as well. Like, I'm sure there's super chats about this. Oh, and it's just gone by. Mm. Um, oh, fuck, it's gone. Um, yeah, Predator <laughs> 2 here. Saying after Predator 2, it started to suck. Um, I, I don't know about you guys. I really fucking like Predator 2. I think it's a pretty worthy follow-up to the original. It's definitely not as good. Um, it's my favorite of all the sequels. Um, yeah. For sure. Uh, like, not even close. I, I love the first half. I'm less of a fan of the second half. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, you you exchange the actual jungle for the concrete jungle. I get that. Mm. Um, I just, it's so difficult when you've got Arnie as a, as, as such a powerful lead in the first film to then uh, switch. Is it Danny Glover? Is it Danny Glover? Is the it's uh, Danny Glover? Yeah. yeah. Uh, to 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 kind of go to Danny Glover. That I know he's just meant to be like a regular cop, and I know again it's meant to be now these are regular people, you know, you know, regular ish is not, you know, highly trained, uh, special ops and all that, but mm. I don't know. It just never, it never quite worked for me. I did like the freeze a bit though. I, yeah. I did think the freeze a bit was, was very clever, but I just, there was just something about it. But it, when they gave you the, the alien head at the end, you know, that got everyone. Oh yeah. Yeah. We know oh, that, that was cool in the future. I know, like it, it, it was 
probably one of the worst decisions in retrospect because it spawned <laughs> the god awful Aliens versus Predator movies. But it's a good example though of that movie which expands on the lore a little bit and just gives you little bits, little, little tidbits of information without like ruining the mystery of the Predators or anything. It just it kind of moves things forward a little bit, but not too much. And I think it's tough for a sequel to strike that balance, but that's what I appreciate about Predator 2. I think we all like the idea that if you defeat a predator, the other predators are impressed and they're like, "Good job, nice." Yeah. Like, when you, the mm. normal thing is for them to all kill you, but to have them pause and be like, "You're an impressive human," we're all like, "Hey, that's pretty cool." Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's, well, there's, there's, there's a level of honor with it, uh, yeah. even though. Let's just be honest. Uh, the the prey that the predator is hunting is. <laughs> at a massive disadvantage uh, to the Predator itself, so it, you could perceive it as, as somewhat cowardly. Um, um, I imagine, I'm not a Predator, but I hmm. imagine they would justify that to you as, well, there's a hell of a lot more of them than me, and uh, we're, we're, we've got the same benefits here in this jungle. They're supposed to be active at all times. Uh, you know, and, and of course, depending on the situation, I think we all fucking adore the fact that it won't kill people who don't have weapons. That's great. I think that's really, really clever. That's really, really good. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to have that sort of honor system of you defeated one of us. Uh, we're going to pay homage to you and give you a trophy. Uh, I, I, of... Yeah, that, that was always a scene that confused me as a kid because like, it hands Danny Glover like this old flintlock pistol mm. and it's got like a, a really detailed engraving on it. Like an People in chat probably know what it is, but it like it's it's the name of the owner or whatever and date. And as a kid, I was always like, I feel like this is really significant. Like the movie's trying to tell me something like really important, like it's reference to some historical figure or event or whatever. But I have no fucking idea what it is. Oh, and I always I, I, perceived it as this. That was the that predator's first kill. I, I, I assume so. Yeah, but it's just the so. fact that it, it was really like. Not just the fact that it's it's an old fashioned pistol, so you know hmm. that they've been around for a long oh, time. Yeah. It's the fact that you I, see that there's a really detailed engraving on it. Well, yeah, but the, the engraving tells us an exact date, and then that gives us and they've been around at least and since yeah. then. And and how fucking st scary is that? Like predators have been hunting us for that long, at least. <laughs> I just think those poor bastards, like three hundred years ago, armed with flintlock pistols, trying to go up a f against a fucking predator. Well, to be fair, we don't <laughs> know if the predator would have taken the plasma caster at that point. Maybe it would have. Maybe it wouldn't have. Uh, I imagine if, if say for example, you guys wanted to, we were set to write a predator movie. If he goes back to medieval times, I'd be like, I don't know if we should give him the plasma caster. I don't know if the predator would think that's fair at all. But wouldn't that be a great movie? It would be a fucking I, I awesome movie. I would love to see a medieval, medieval, uh, you know, army even maybe. I don't know, uh, but, but a medieval situation castle with the predator. My, my, my ideal scenario is a sequel to Season of the Witch, starring Nicolas Cage, <laughs> where he goes up against the predator this time. <laughs> Top fucking not. Okay. <laughs> Make it happen, Hollywood. By the way, <laughs> I was, just go nuts, mate. Just go if nuts. If we can um, just name a couple, like, so, like, slashes at the time, or even let's just consider all of history, right? Because it's something mm. that I fucking adore about Predators. It's like, Freddy Krueger, why does he kill people? It's like, well, he was burned or, or, or something for um, a bunch of people burned him, right? And then it's like he's yeah. a vengeful spirit. Like, okay. Um, the fucking. Uh, Michael, Myers. Michael Myers and Jason. The, Michael Myers, we never know what Michael Myers' motivation is, right? That's the point of him. We don't know the motivation. Yeah, he's just always kind of been a killer, I think. Mm. Yeah, he's a really strange antagonist in movies like this. And then Jason is he? Uh, his mother was was she abusive or something? I, can't <sighs> I think yeah. Was he not like a deformed kid or something when he was born, and he was like bullied and stuff, and his parents disowned him? Oh, I don't they, fucking know. oh, they were bullying him, and they like tossed him into the river, and he like drowned or something, right? Or something. Yeah, and yeah. Lake, the lake, yeah. And he died because the camp people were having sex; they weren't paying attention. <laughs> I think yeah. I think that's it. Um, like J Jigsaw, I, th I think his motivation was like he wants to teach people to value life more. Like, all right, um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre—they're all just crazy hillbillies. I <laughs> think <laughs> like. Yeah, uh, Ghostface. I'm pretty sure that's the individual people. They want to get uh, particular people killed for like personal reasons. I can't fully remember. Chucky's like oh, insane. Yeah. I'm trying to just go through a lot of them quickly. Hey, Chucky's got a non 
binary son. Sweet. Chucky is an ally, okay? So you can't yeah. select Chucky. You <laughs> so can murder you... anyone if you're an ally. It's okay. Um, the where I'm going with this is Predator was so fucking awesome that it was like, I'm doing this to prove I'm the superior fighter. Mm. Yeah. Do it for the thrill, the hunt. Yeah, it's like, like thrill, the hunt. Shit, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, and yeah, the one shot I never forgot from the first time I saw it was pulling the spine out of Billy and then like roaring in the jungle. <laughs> awesome. But you don't, you don't need a, a complex, overly complex uh, idea or theme for it to just work. Mm. Uh, and, and this is very simple. You know, this is at the end of the day, very simple uh, and very simply put together, but it's great. It, it does that great horror movie thing where the antagonist is this unknown quantity to begin with mm. uh, and that's what makes it scary because you don't know what it wants you don't know what its capabilities are um you don't know what it can do and and where it might be uh, as the movie progresses they gradually learn more about it until you you get almost into it's not really a, a comfort zone but like you at least understand what the predator will do and you understand that it's got a certain code of honor that it obeys like it won't kill unarmed people and that sort of thing um, and so that brings you to the end of the horror phase of the movie, and then it becomes that kind of survival phase where it's just Dutch versus the Predator. He knows what it can do, um, and he knows its capabilities and its weaknesses, and he knows then how to exploit it. And so then he becomes the Predator. When you when yeah. you see the end of the movie, it's like blindly shooting at him because he's been able to disguise himself with the mod. He can he can blind it to him. Um, you get that scene where it's just blasting constantly into the jungle, mm. just as he did earlier in the movie, and he has now become the predator that's hunting it, mm. which is just—it's a nice reversal of of um, roles, I suppose. Um, yeah, and I think it's there's, both... there's three films in this film. There is that I've said that. Yeah, there's the action movie, which it's it's almost a movie within a movie. You know, the the team that gets sent in to. Um, you know, to rescue these hostages, but it turns out they've been kind of screwed over by Dylan, and you know they have to. Uh, you know, he he was just using them for his own ends. Then you've got the the horror phase with the predators hunting them. It's like a slasher flick, and then it's the the battle of Dutch versus the predator. And to to speak on that as well, the uh, all this the, we talk about all, all the stuff they're achieving. The characters, fucking top notch, so well mm -hmm. individual and uh, motivated and. Yeah, um, Dylan's a character that I think a lot of people will be like, Ugh, we, we kind of follow the team, we're like, Dylan sucks, we don't like Dylan, and then by the time you hit you know, the third portion of the film, you're like, no, nah, Dylan's fucking awesome, but it's really sad that he dies. Yeah, Dylan's great. I, and played by Carl Weathers, like, that dude yeah. is just a charismatic motherfucker. Yeah. He was great in everything he did, and it's such a shame that he never really like took off as a, as a big A-lister, but in this, he's great. You know, he's he, he's a former kind of um, special forces guy, just like Dutch. They've obviously got a history together. He's pretty rusty now, which brings him into conflict with Mac, who threatens to fucking kill him <laughs> if, he, if he screws yeah. up. Yeah. You know, that scene where he, he slips and falls and, and Mac. I'll bleed like, you. Yeah. I'll bleed you slow. <laughs> yeah. I'll bleed you real quiet and leave you here. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Fucking awesome. But what's great then is like ultimately the two of them end up working together and like Mac comes to trust him a little bit and respect him and, does, and likewise yeah. with Dylan, which is it's great. It brings their character arc to a good conclusion. Um, and yeah, he proves himself gradually over the course of the movie. He seems kind of useless and you find out he's this slimy CIA guy who's just using Dutch and his team, but he's also willing to pitch in and help out and he, he's not afraid to fight mm. alongside the rest of them. He's not incompetent. Well, um, he, he does lie to them but it's for good, like, f from his POV, he wants them because they're the best and his team was wiped out and he has to find out why. So if he gives them a different reason, he can get this job done. That's his logic, but he lied to them as to the nature of this mission going beyond rescuing a hostage. Yeah. Well, that's what Dutch has said to him before, because um, um, Dylan asks him, why did you pass on, like, a job in Libya or something? And Dutch is like, we're, we're a rescue team, we're not assassins. Yeah. yeah. So you establish quite quick, quite quickly with him, like he's he's not afraid to fight, but he's not really there to just kill people. He's he's like he says, he's there to rescue folk, um, and so he has a certain moral standard about the kind of jobs that he'll take on. But then Dylan uses that and and um, kind of screws him over, makes him do something he wouldn't have done normally. 
And uh, yeah, those two have a great drive. back and forth throughout the movie that I would argue climaxes with uh, that decision where he's just like, don't be a fucking hero. And then he's just like, you go, I'll sort it out. Yeah. I Honestly. love that line from Dutch where he's like, you can't win this, Dylan. And he's yeah. like, maybe I can get even. Maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because he fucking great. hates this predator, killed all of his men. Yep. It's a great uh, uh, through line. And that's the thing, they take advantage of every moment in this film all the dialogue from everybody's matching up with exactly what they personally want and they believe in. Because Max got a vendetta as well, thanks to uh, knocking out uh, Jesse Lane. Ventura. Yeah. Lane, yeah. That's uh, uh, but that's good, but that's interesting because like Mac is quite quiet, mm -hmm. uh, and then when we kind of hear from Mac, you know, he's saying to Carl Weathers, oh, "I'll bleed you, I'll bleed you, and then I'll leave you here, and you know, if you if you drop back, and then." Um, you know, we see him come back to help a couple of times, but when uh when Jesse Ventura is killed, then he kind of like opens up, like almost like completely opens up, and it's just like, you know, when Nani's just like, I'm sorry about uh what's he called what's Jesse Ventura's Blaine. Blaine. Blaine, that's it, yeah. I'm sorry about it. And it was just like here's my friend. And it's just, you know, and then just something as simple as that just makes you realize that, you know, this guy's as human as, as anyone else. And then you get the little bit with the flask because they were sharing the hip, you know, the flask. And I think uh, Mac was taking some of Jesse Ventura's uh, chewing tobacco <laughs> at, at one point as well. <laughs> so, you know, these guys were like share, you know, clearly sh like sharing their little, their little, um, you know, vices with each other. And then, if, yeah. then of course, he gives he he puts the uh, cantina with with the body, uh, and then and then you have you know he has those monologues on his own when he's you know talking about oh we used to do this and that you know and it's just like this guy is like clearly kind of like damaged by war uh, yeah. and death and maybe one of the few tethers that he's actually got to his to his mental stability is has just gone um yep. so yeah i think matt kind of i mean he sort of loses it a little bit um but when he does it's weird because it's like when he sees the predator everything kind of clicks back into war mode again yep. and when and he you know pulls dylan in and then, then he's just like you know look there and he's got a total bead on the predator yeah, um, full yeah. vengeance mode, basically. Yeah, but it's yeah. like, but it's great because they they're always shown as very competent uh, people. Uh, you know, nobody's nobody's a butt of a joke. Uh, nobody feels as if they haven't, you know, or don't deserve their position there. And you understand uh, their decisions, which is really important. You know sorry. why they do. You understand their positions. You know, understand their decisions. Mm. You you know why they fucking do everything they do in this film. And it's, that's another part of this film that's so satisfying and it's cited all the time. Along with the thing, a movie where the monster takes them out one by one, and they're smart. They're not yeah. stupid. They don't mm. just do stupid stuff. They go, I need to walk alone in naked into a hole and hurt because I just I gotta. I just need to. Hopefully, I don't. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, it the woods for a piss. Yeah, um, and you know, you get two. Two of them are killed in that initial encounter with the predator. You know, first, um, you know, Anna tries to escape, um, and what's his name, uh, Hawkins. Black. Yeah, Shin <laughs> Hawk. Yeah, um, Hawkins is his character. He like manages to track her down, and the predator takes him out first, drags him off into the jungle. Mm. Um, and then you know Arnold, it, it's great because there's real like horrific scenes in this, like where they they find bits and pieces of him. Like I think his clothes are lying there, and they're all covered in blood or whatever. Yeah. Um, and Arnold's like, I want him found, um, and so he sends you know they spread out to search for him, and that's when Blaine gets taken out by the predator. So that's two of them have been killed um in in that opening encounter, and Blaine's so arguably quick. like their strongest soldier with their best weapon. You know, the yeah. minigun. Minigun, yeah. Um, well, yeah that that minigun was fucking amazing as well. It, it's a it thing was. of beauty. It and really the, is. Set in tone as well. It's just like, they're both just wiped out instantly. Um, and you have Arnie being like, they didn't take his radio or his weapon. It's like, the fuck is this? And you as a viewer are just like, with him. You're like, I don't know what this is. What the hell's happening? Mm. I'll say somebody, as well. Like, said, 
sorry, go on, go on. Uh, yeah, like Arnie obviously has never been known as an actor, but I will fucking <laughs> say, like for the most part, he gives a pretty good performance in this movie. Like when really, he's very believable, shocked very by honest, things, yeah. yeah, like he he genuinely gives that that impression of like a pretty competent soldier who's who's doing his best in really inexplicable circumstances. The only time that's thing. broken is in the village. Uh, yeah, <laughs> where he crap. just he suddenly he goes into one liner mode at one point. He's just yeah. like knock, yeah. knock, and you know, and <laughs> stick I, around. Yeah, yeah like, I see why? that. <laughs> Character wise, it seems to me that he's that's in his element. He sees all of these awful people having taken hostages. They do it. They're evil doers, you know. And we're wiping mm. them out. We're the good guys, and we're basically bulletproof. We got this. And as soon as the predator stuff starts happening, he just kicks into a complete different gear of like very serious and you've killed one of my men sure two of sure. my men yeah. like it's, and that's, again that's a part of the subversion I would argue that they, you think you're watching one film but then you're watching a completely different yeah. film yeah I, I, I would yeah for sure and like the, the scenes you know during that big battle scene uh, where he's delivering his one liners it lures you into that false sense of security like oh this is just a, a you know a, a fun action mm. movie yeah they're, they're trading quips you know you've got um, Poncho and Blaine there with his, you know, <laughs> you're hit, you're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. To bleed. <laughs> <laughs> but just before that, I love Blaine's line is where, where, cause there's a guy like dug in like above them on a, an elevated position firing yeah. down at them. And he's like, son of a bitch is dug in like an Alabama tick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, but yeah, no, you're quite right. It's, it's actually those one-liners that I think. Uh, I mean, they they're funny. I, you know, I chuckle at them when he says them. But I know, I think I think it works for the severity of uh, the situation because as soon as the predator comes into play, then you don't get any more one-liners. You know, from yeah. uh, I think the only time you kind of get one is when it takes its mask off and he goes, "You're an ugly motherfucker." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That that <laughs> that uh, echo in Predator Two though, Ugh. remember that? Oh yeah, when it grabs him and just goes motherfucker. Oh, I, I've always felt that was so awkward. The the bit I always find the most awkward in Predator Two was when Busey gets chopped in half, but then his top half doesn't fall to the ground. It's <laughs> <laughs> never made sense to me. Like, it's what's really... holding it up? <laughs> <laughs> And he's never been the same since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, he had, he had some great lines in that movie. A fucking alien. <laughs> um, I don't know how yeah, long like, it's been since I've seen number two. Maybe twenty years. You should give it another watch, man. Like, I, particularly compared to the movies you get nowadays, I think you'd find it better than you remember. Oh, I, I've noticed that with a lot of stuff recently. Watching uh, oh, things yeah. from. Not that far long ago either, but yeah. Somebody yeah, in the chat talk... said uh, Bill Duke is just such a, an underrated actor, and I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, um, he's, is, he's uh, great. He's got great presence. His reaction to when he sees the predator, and to be fair, it's kind of the first proper look we get as well with just the eyes. That that earlier point in the movie, that to me is what you. It's the most direct switch we've gotten. Uh, we're confused, and that's basically confirmation. There is some kind of creature that's killing everybody. What the fuck you got? And just his realization that he just goes, God, yeah. and just starts praying the gun. Because it's like a panic, right? Simultaneously, it's knocked out two of you guys without even realizing how. And it, and it's invisible. It has these creepy mm. fucking eyes, and it's been following you. It's just like, you know, terror and just absolute urgency. Fucking kill it. I love when he clicks, he runs out of bullets with his with his own. You know, light machine gun, and so he just picks up the minigun. Yeah, and you know, shit's getting serious when he whips his hat off. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he, yeah, he he's takes the time to pull his hat yeah. off. Like, I'm not fucking around now. He and does it's it when amazing he goes chasing because, after him as well. So, well, when and, this thing whirls yeah. into action, it just cuts through the trees like a fucking yeah. chainsaw. Like this thing is so powerful, like it will just flatten everything in front of it. It's incredible to watch. And to be fair to Bill Duke, he did tag it. He did, he did. He did it, yeah. He did tag it, yeah. Which is another thing that I love about <laughs> this monster compared to others is that it that healing scene or repair scene, whatever you want to call it, mm. grounds the fuck out of this creature, makes it so much more engaging when you know it's a bullet away from losing. Yeah. Yeah, it could be hurt 
Uh, it bleeds. Uh, that scream is like, ooh. Yeah. It's, and it's great Hannah, because Hannah it, hears that. Because you get a moment of vulnerability from it, mm. the fact that it's damaged and it has to attend to its its wounds. But then when it yanks the bullet out and it screams, it then flashes straight back to the team and they hear this just this horrific roar off yep. in the jungle and they're freaked out by it. So it mm. still maintains it as this, oh shit, this threat is out there somewhere and we don't know what it is. Um, just god damn, like so many of these scenes are just so well put together. Well, I mean, we we don't that none of them see the blood apart from Anna. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. because she's pretending that she doesn't speak English, uh, we don't we there's pieces of the puzzle which they have, but she doesn't share them. So so when shit really goes down and Anna starts speaking to. You know when when Arnie goes up and goes, "What did you see? What did you see?" And then she actually decides to engage him in English, uh, and then, then you know then she reveals, you know this the blood, and if that's you know when we get Arnie going, if it bleeds, we can kill it. But it, it tells us as an audience as well that yeah, this is uh, this isn't going to be some sort of Michael Myers creature. Uh, there's a vulnerability. Can hmm. they exploit it? So we, 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 you know, we've fed these little things here and there. Yeah, the honestly, the subtlety of this film is impressive. Because, uh, like, I don't think they would give that much trust to an audience these days. Much more stuff no. would be explained blatantly. Yeah, it's I, I love that means we can kill it with these rounds of bullets that we have if we hit the fleshy areas. <laughs> sure. I, I like yeah. as well, like you know, when they're they're making their way towards the guerrilla camp, um, and they they realize that a previous patrol had gone on ahead of them like someone else had been sent in to do this mission before them and then they find their their bodies like they've been skinned alive mm. um, and they're trying to figure out what the hell had happened to these people because they're they're american soldiers and billy's like you know examining the scene he's like there was a firefight and they were shooting in all directions mm. um, yeah but i can't find a single track i don't know what they were shooting at and it's great it just it it, it just sets this really unnerving like eerie tone to that whole thing like someone else has tried to do this before you um and just died horrifically we don't mm. know what they were fighting or what they were shooting at but like it, it cut them to pieces but i just it's, think that's a great way of building that that tension up billy's yeah. a great tension building character because he says oh, yeah. very little uh, he's the tracker so he's normally you know point and then we get that great what i think is a great bit with with billy where he uh, he literally stops, you know, because they're all, they're going at, you know, meant to be like a five minute whatever it is into, and he stops everyone. So Arnie stops everyone, and he's just staring into the woods, mm. and he's just you just know that he, they're being watched, and they were being watched. We saw the pred, you know, we see from the predator's vision uh, of him looking down at them, and then you know, sort of Arnie's like watching for a bit, and then he goes to goes forward to Billy. He's just like, what is it? And it's just like, Billy's just like transfixed in, in, into the... So there's like, yeah, there's sort of almost a spiritual connection and, you know, Billy being quite well, a spiritual character. I highlight in that as well, I love how much this team feels like a real team. Everyone's speciality really feels mm. like it would be useful and his being like, he's so familiar <coughs> with the show as well yeah. as being probably the hunter out of the group, which is so why it's so fucking awesome that he can pick up on the Predator. Yeah. The yeah. sense of we're being hunted. I, I think I've, I've heard He's no Michael say, Burnham. No, no, well, yeah, she would have just killed the Predator in the first two minutes of the movie. Job done. Um, but yeah. I, And then she'd have a good cry about it. But <laughs> no, I, I've heard people say that like the, the different characters in this represent the different senses. Like Hawkins has got these oversized oh. glasses on that he represents like sight, I guess. Okay. Um, you know, Blaine is the muscle. He's the biggest of the team, the strongest. Um, Billy has got that kind of sixth sense of, of you know, that there's something out there that's wrong um, and that it's coming for them. Um, and so each of them, like as each of them gets killed, more and more of the team are stripped away and more of like Arnold's resources are, mm. are taken away from him until it's ultimately just him that's left. You know, and he's I, more I, of a jack of all trades as well as being buff as fuck. Yeah, yeah, he just happens to be a fucking bodybuilder. Like, what can you do? <laughs> yeah, I have to talk about the handshake as well, the predator oh, handshake. Yeah. It's just 
the most glorious moment I think in all of cinema. <laughs> the most macho fucking thing you're ever gonna see. Jesus, he's just, it's well, he's just moving his hands down. He's just like look at it. Carwell is like, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, he's be pushing too many pencils. <laughs> Dylan, you son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> but it's great. Think... And, you know, these are masculine men. These aren't fucking soy boys, you know. Oh, could you imagine a sh- shit like that happening in Discovery? <laughs> Benedict, what I was going to say, you'd be like, Benedict Cumberbatch is Dutch. It's like, no. I mean, already, when Adrian Brody was trying to take the role of Adi in Predators, it was already just like, no, you gotta get, you can't get him to do it. You gotta get someone much bigger. You, yeah, like I, I, I agree with some critics of that movie where it's like he he seems tough because he's got a really gravelly voice, like he's almost been put through a synthesizer or it's something. Nice. Um, and, yeah, like he's not, he's he's not Arnold. Just no. Uh, yeah, no one, try no to make your own Arnold. thing. Don't try and repeat Arnold with someone who isn't fucking Arnold. <laughs> also, that arm, by the way, that uh, Dylan handshakes with, that's the one that gets blown off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, foreshadowing! <laughs> Baby. So it was his weak arm. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, though, because we're kind of, when we're talking about Billy and just the Predator in general, because we we're definitely not doing chronological with this one, huh? We're going around. No, we're just <laughs> shit all over the place. It's uh, it's a fun way to do so it. Yeah, you know? So another aspect of the Predator I fucking love is that it records voices, listens mm. to them back, and then uses them to bait people. And that element is already cool on its own, just as a mechanic, and there's loads you can do with it, but that being one of the first things we learn about this thing from its POV in one of those initial scenes, like we just see this heat vision POV, and it's playing all of the stuff we've heard back to itself. So we're just like, "What the fuck is happening?" And then having it pick up the scorpion after it's been killed to look at it, meaning we know exactly where it is right now. It's right behind them, and of yeah. course, the hand has claws on it. It's yeah. this combination of like savagery plus technology. So it's just it just leaves you as a viewer just like, "What am I looking at? What is this?" I'm gonna I'm gonna call it Predator Two, like oh, yeah. one of the most unnerving candy. fucking scenes in in that movie that scared the shit out of me as a kid in in the subway when Bill Paxton's shooting at it and it's just this horrifying like shape coming at him through the darkness and it just says like want some candy like oh. repeating what the kid had done that is brilliant like the, even if you don't so like Predator Two for that one that I wish uh, this is what I mean it drives me nuts we've had so many bad Predator movies. How are you fucking this up? Like, it should be it should be okay to get at least a five out of ten. You guys can do it. I believe in you. Like the amount of potential you get given. Uh, yeah. I'm just glad we got one that was fucking incredible. Like, at least we got the one. Yeah, yeah. Um, the 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 character I've always been a little bit curious about is Anna because you don't get a huge amount of like backstory to her or anything. Like, I mean, I get that, like, none of the team you really learn that much about before they were involved in this. But with her, like, she's she's obviously working with these um, rebels, and she's part of that that planned invasion of whatever country that they're in. Um, but that's never really addressed. She's kind of just then, like, almost absorbed into the team, and they start trusting her, and then she's just, you know, helping them out. They always felt like they could have just given us a little bit more to resolve that, I guess. I don't know. I like don't, it might have dragged it down a bit. But. When when she's in the helicopter at the end, yeah, and Dutch is just like you know, and I was just like, they're just taking away for her to be interrogated to fuck now. Probably, yeah. See you in Guantanamo Bay, Anna. Yeah, it's just like this, this, <laughs> this woman's life is getting far worse when they land. You know, far far worse. I mean, I assume that she's less a character and more so points are made with her existence, as in like. One being she hates these guys, but then obviously the threat becomes so big that she would rather be with these people and help them than anywhere near that creature. And then her knowledge of its history to a degree um, pl- just plays in as a helpful. And it shows that they're not quite ruthless. They will take her with them, and they do look after her. Arnie obviously um, looks after her quite a bit near the end. Yeah, there's you know there's things that we learn as a result of her being there, but we don't get a lot on her as a person. Yeah, well, uh, Arnie works. Arnie's the one who works out that if you're, if you don't carry a weapon, that's why you're not being targeted. Yeah. Um. And so when she goes to pick up the gun, he's just like, no. 
oh, you know. Uh, yeah, because he knows if she picks that up, she's dead. Yeah. What, what's she interesting, though, she, she picks that up and tells him to run. Like, she's almost willing to, like, sacrifice herself to try and hold it up or try and kill it so that he can get away, which is kind of interesting by that point. Yeah, yeah. I think that's so much desperation. Everyone is dead except them now. Mm. That's another thing. Yeah. Oh, so fucking good, man. When when Billy's going to delay the Predator and mm. like they get so far, you hear him scream and then they all just turn around and stare because they know it could be with us now because he's yeah. dead. It could be any set. So yeah. good. <laughs> like in terms yeah. of tension. Because we know it's not going to be there in a second, but it could be here in five. What what's yeah? Because what's great as well is how restrained that is. Like you don't need to see Billy die to know that he's he's met a horrible end. Um, yeah. But if it was done today, I feel like you would get this big protracted like CGI heavy fight scene with him and the Predator. Yeah, we got to bounce hmm. around like Yoda in the prequels, probably. <laughs> yeah, and it's like you don't need it. Like less is more in in films like this. But we know, which is interesting, because obviously they're going forward. Billy's staying on the the ridge area. Uh, and then we see from the the predator's POV of him coming up to the bridge. Yeah, uh, they've gone their little distance. We hear Br Billy scream. That fight was over in five seconds. It was, yeah, yeah. Billy you know, didn't stand he, a he, Yeah, he just tore fucking Billy apart. Yeah. Um, and we do see, you know, Billy later on having his spine and skull ripped out of him. You yeah, do, because yeah. he was. Like, I imagine the predator considered him a worthy opponent. Mm. Yeah. As in, not necessarily that he took the longest to kill, but one that had the most honor. He was probably impressed that this guy was like, "Fight me with a." That I got a sword. Well, a, yeah, whatever that is. Uh, knife. Yeah, knife. Uh, and I imagine I like to believe the predator did not just shoot him with the plasma caster. That he he fought him with the the blades. Yeah, I think he. I, I think I, he probably stabbed him with the blades. Yeah. Yeah, you would have heard it. I think because it's pretty loud. Mm. Um. But yeah, I did, I did. I loved that line from Billy, where he's like, "I'm scared, Poncho," because he's not he's not saying it in a way that seems scared, but like because he's so reserved. But like, mm. it's an admission from him that like we're fighting something that I can't even begin to understand, and I'm scared of what it's going to do to us. But yeah, I would, I would argue that area is the peak of the second film, and it's almost about to end, if you will, of, of the three parts, which is Arnie, uh, Poncho, and her. After Billy's dead, they're just terrified. Because what the fuck can we do at this point? We've tried so we've tried everything, and if you remember, like the gun that they're aiming down the corridor, it's just shaking as they're aiming at it because they don't know oh, where Anna, it is. Oh, Anna, yeah, yeah, his hands like shaking. No, it's he, yeah. Poncho that's Poncho holding it. Hand, um, but, yeah, and yeah, oh, Poncho, okay, yeah, yeah. See, but you see the shaking well, gun. But point being, if you look at Arnie's face, he's not resolute. He's like concerned as fuck because they're, they're at their wit's end now. Yeah, uh, and then Poncho gets uh, a fucking blaster in the side of his head. <laughs> yeah, I always felt bad for Poncho actually because he got kind of disabled by that log that just hit him, crushed yeah. all his ribs, <laughs> fucking annihilated him. Yeah, um, which was which was kind of a shame, but um, well, that was one of their own booby traps. So it was, yeah. The predator, uh, I think the predator hit it with like a with its. You know, it's plasma caster and just knocked it off, so it swung down, hit him. But I think that was another yeah, time where it fired a couple of times in random places, but it's more so because it was completely disoriented by being in the net. Yeah. Are you, are you, well, <laughs> like me, it's, you know, it goes up in the net. Uh, am I the only one who's just like, shoot it? Shoot yeah. It <laughs> just, just all your weapons, just shoot yeah. it. You'll probably hit it. Like, and they're, but they're just, all spent, just like mesmerized. We, we can't see anything, but the net's gone off. And well, if you remember, it's a shoot. surprise, and I think most of them are confused as what the fuck's even happening. Because well, um, yeah, because these invisibles, they don't know yeah, what yeah. the fuck's going on. Um, so that was yeah, that was like they're all sort of like taken, they're taken aback. Um, and then, then it, then it cuts its way the, out. Yeah, the plasma cast starts firing, and they all start panicking, like trying to run around. And Poncho gets fucking wrecked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's when when Billy runs off after it. Um, no, no, sorry, not Billy. Uh, Mac, 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 yeah. Mac goes off. Uh, after. Yeah, yeah he knocks off. his ca knocks his cap off again because he's me. Yeah, and he's he's, just, he's just like, uh, I'm gonna have me some fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna have me yeah. some fun. <laughs> I'm have some yeah, fun. which is obviously the, what was playing when we we ended up their most powerful. That was the, almost like their theme in a way. Yeah, so he's like singing um, it desperately. It's such a great little uh, comparison. Yeah. Uh, but then you think, 
you kind of assume like, oh, he's just going to wander off to his death. But then you, when when Dylan goes after him, you know, and, and Mac just grabs him and, and pulls him mm. behind cover. So you know, it's like, oh, he's he's with it enough to know what's up. He's able to like restrain he's himself, right. and he's able to see this predator, um, you know, up in the the up in the canopy. So this guy's pretty switched on, um, and it's just. I don't know. It's bad luck, I guess, that they both get taken out by it. Like well, they split up and stuff. Another wonderful <laughs> moment because you've got Mac. They're both really experienced. He's got the drop on the Predator. They can see it, or rather, they think they do. The Predator knows they're there, and it's just yes. waiting. It's a, it's a counter trap, right? And so it should, we've had basically like all of the standard approaches to trying to kill the Predator, and the Predator wins every time. Uh, yeah. Hence the final act of the movie being like, I'm I'm gonna kill it with caveman powers. Mm. <laughs> it fucking works. Yeah. Wait, 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 <clears> well, he's, he's even... finally he's <laughs> finally got the measure of what it can do and how it works. And you know that that obviously the scene where he Dutch is getting pursued by it, he falls off a waterfall and just kind of collapses into this mud bank. Um, and then when the predator can't see him. You know, it's it's okay. It's a little bit convenient, but it it gives him just enough to even the score with him and it. Um, is it convenient because he would have looked for a cliff, and what's going to be near water? It would be mud. Yeah. So, like, all I would say is convenient. Well, I don't know. What I always loved about it was you can kind of make Arnie out in the infrared look if you look for him, but it's enough that I believe a predator would just be like that. Just mixes in with everything else. I, I can't really make out the difference. Um. And that was obviously Max' downfall, is he didn't he had no idea that's how the predator vision works. Yeah. So there's a good chance the predator was looking at him the entire time when he thought he was hidden in the brush, sort of thing. Yeah, because he'd be giving off this big ass heat signature. Uh, yeah. But they're not, you know, the, how on earth were they? It's not them being stupid. It's it's the technology of the predator, which makes you know. So you <clears throat> you, you can't you can't like pick fault with any of the characters go oh mac was stupid because no no they, they were following the training he tracked him he could see him but you know, they they're not to know that this creature's got infrared vision that's going to see them all so I more, on... all of them except the slightest criticism i think the criticism you should change it to is the mud happens to cover most of his body without him necessarily doing <laughs> that on purpose yeah um and it, you know it obviously doesn't cover his eyes which i guess give off heat as well Some i thing. think if we're looking at a 100% and you cover 80, I think that should be enough to confuse a predator as to what exactly you even are anymore. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Because like, it does end up targeting like a, an animal that's like, yeah. inside a log or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, rodent. <laughs> and even that gets away. He's like, you fucking missed me, bitch. Also, you, you uh, bet your ass. This movie's <laughs> close to perfect, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I do. I do love the the gearing up scene for the final confrontation, where Dutch is like fashioning his weapons and you know setting his traps and stuff. And you get the mm -hmm. the music just slowly building up. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's all great stuff. Yeah, but it's so it's it is very interesting that you know this alien with this advanced technology far advanced to ours. But we saw at the beginning of the film, you know, we have firepower. We got a lot of firepower uh, that we could respond. And ultimately, you had to regress right back to kind of st almost Stone Age esque uh, traps to defeat this uh, technologically advanced hunter. So it's like a nice, yeah. nice little, nice little twists and turns. Yeah. Yeah, here's um. I just grabbed a screenshot of it because I, I just I really like it. Um, that's the predator's vision of when Arnie's trying to hide, and if you just have a look at it, you can make Arnie out. Uh, details like that are just really cool to have in a movie for infrared back in fucking these days. Which infrared, obviously, it just looks like crap to a degree. <laughs> um, and then of course this scene being the reveal of the predator, uh, properly, and we watch Arnie see it as well in all of its fucking glory and it really is such a design oh, yeah well awesome. it's uh yeah because the water fucks up its camouflage mm. system doesn't it so you get all this weird electrical arcing going across it and then it just decloaks and yeah it's great it just like it's still got the mask on obviously but you, yeah you know, it's got the big weird dreadlocks at the back and it's obviously huge and, and bulky and stuff and you see the plasma caster on the the shoulder like yeah it's it's 
just a great scene. Which, you know? by the way, fucking the main villain in the Predator shoots his own fucking head off with the plasma cast. Did you remember that? Yeah, <laughs> I a, remember that. It's the kind of th- it's totally a Shane Black choice, but it's just like he spends the whole movie orchestrating all these different things, and in the middle of a battle scene, it's just then you're like, oh. Bye. Isn't there a reason for that? Didn't they have to do reshoots or something and the actor wasn't well, available anymore and they were like, fuck it, we just need to kill him off then immediately. And you, that was what say, they came up with. You say, isn't there a reason as if like that was the, that's the where, that's where they ended up, you know? <laughs> it, just seems like, <laughs> like, like, it reminds me, if someone said like, well, there's a reason Black Widow, you know, broke her face in her movie. They were running <laughs> low on time. <laughs> 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 Tell you about it. I, I was talking to a guy about this the other day. Like when you had monetary time actor restrictions, as, as well as just all those ones, it seems to me like back in the day that forced you to come up with some creative decisions that were incredible. Like I'm assuming you guys know, like Aliens' budget was tiny, mm. and yet it's probably one of the best looking of all in the series. This is like, how mm. did that happen? It's like, well, because the people behind it were working their fucking asses off to make use of. Didn't they have like milk crates colored black and turned upside down to make the floor? Just oh, to be, make it be all kinds of crazy stuff like that, yeah. I love stories like that. It's it wow. makes me think like you guys really had to think creatively, and you had to put a lot of effort into that. But like I don't know, these days they get given three hundred million dollars, and then it looks like crap for some reason. Mm. Like a lot of stuff, anyway. Well, it looks like crap because it's not authentic, and in the you know we're, we're just uh, you know CGI is is gone so far. It's great when it's used sparingly you you know using it to change an environment let's say you know you want want extra trees you want an extra building you want something there but it's just gone so far that you know virtually every creature now every alien it's all cgi and it just doesn't look real and that's why i mean the predator costume is just so amazing because it's practical and it's armor and then the armor comes off and then there's an alien underneath the armor yeah that actually looks like a realistic live alien. So to me, my brain is now saying, oh, this is like a, a legitimate threat. But when it's just a CGI fucking blob, uh, you, you you can't get I can't get invested. I can't my brain can't think, oh well, this is this is going to be a legitimate threat because it's just pixels. There's always that disconnect with CGI. You always get it, no matter how good it is. Because you can just sense that it's got no weight to it. It's mm. just there's always that slight you know, uncanniness to it. Um, yeah, there's a good point here that James Cameron, he cut his teeth with Roger Corman. Um, so he, yeah, James Cameron's first ever gig, I think, was on a, as a set designer on Battle Beyond the Stars. And apparently, like, the, the budget of that movie was like a million dollars for the entire thing. Um, actors, everything. Um, but he just worked his ass off, like, salvaging every piece of, like, scrap that he could get to make up these sets. Um, like bits of aircraft and stuff, and the result was they they looked way better than they had any right to be, because he had that work ethic and he had that resourcefulness to to produce stuff like that, and it obviously showed through in things like the Terminator, which you know again mm. fantastic film. Um, but yeah, there's a, another point here actually that the Predator actually beats Arnold when it's beating the shit out of him, um, but it wanted to I guess even the odds a little bit, so it takes its mask off. Yeah, he was, this guy was the most impressive. So the president wants to beat him almost on human terms, which is fists only, like yeah. instead of tools now, which is really cool. And then, you know, Arnie crawls away before you can finish him off. I like um, the bit where Arnold like wallops it with like a, a big log or something. Um, and it just smashes it off its arm. Like the log just collapses mm. and, and he just goes, bad idea. <laughs> but, then, but there's another bit where he, he hits it with like a backhand again like Arnold hitting it full force and it just kind of looks at him for a second and then just punches him straight in the face and Ar- <laughs> Arnold just goes like this like ah, and then falls to the ground <laughs> yeah um, on the point about CGI by the way I, w- I was curious because you said it's like no matter how well you do it it's not going to have as much weight like what do you feel about the Balrog I, I think with things like that Right, where there's no there's no real option except to do CGI. Like you can't recreate something like that with um, with practical effects, with with animatronics or whatever. It just it wouldn't be feasible. Um, and so I think you can get away with that because it's so fantastical to begin with that the only way you can represent it is through CGI. 
So I'll give it a little bit of a pass then. But even then, when you're looking at it, you re- you know it's CGI. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you know it's not real. Like from it's very obvious from looking at it. I um, but I think there's just no about, option. Because like uh, I want to agree with you, but then I wonder about like couldn't someone make the reverse argument where they're like. I hate puppets because they're so fake. You could knock them over sort of thing. But CGI makes it feel like it's a creature that can move on all parts and it's much more alive. Each has its merits. I would mm-hmm. argue the worst and best of both can be really fucky for immersion, right? Because like the Balrog, I'm assuming it was the same for a lot of people like me, but I was just staring at the screen being blown away by this creature. Like that, that alone, same for Predator. But then you can find the worst visions of both. Like I don't know what you guys would say is the worst puppet you've come across in like something mainstream. Um, the Slatheen aren't great in Doctor. Who. Really not. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Yeah. Not so good. Not so good. Um, um, well, I, 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 a there's a, a there's a good example though. That. Yeah, like the Predator is a great example of practical effects used to to great effect. Yeah, you know, it's all just prosthetics and stuff. There's obviously a human actor underneath it, but like the, it's a great combination of the two that um, gives you a creature that looks um, and moves brilliantly. You know, you're you're completely um, taken in by it. Um, you know, by the same token, the Balrog would be something that would be, um, yeah, again, something that you couldn't really represent any other way, and so it it looks perfectly fine. It's a fantastical creature that's really well done with CGI. Um, a mix of the two that looks like shit would be something like the Alien from Aliens Three, um, yeah. where they, they used like an early form of like CGI, whatever oh. fucketry that they used, um, and it looks like garbage. Well, here's and a question: It's very clearly not there. What do you find more effective, the Balrog or the Rancor? Uh, the T Rex from Jurassic Park. <laughs> that wasn't one of the options, <laughs> all right. Now, I are made, we talking the I made, Rancor? I made from, my own. I made my own. Uh, the Rancor from the original version, or like the weird George Lucas like redone version, where it's got like extra tentacles sticking out of it and stuff. Like, fuck whatever he did to the movies. I'm just talking about the original. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably that. Wait, hang on. Because additional tentacle. Not... Are you talking about the Sarlacc pit? That oh yeah, there? yeah. Oh fuck. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um. Rancor underneath the right, 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 right. Essentially, it's just a yeah. model. It's a model moving around. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> I like the goo dripping from its mouth. I like yeah. the Rancor, but I, I like my brain already knows the answer. It's like it's the Balrog. The Balrog is fucking incredible. And it beats out the Rancor. I don't know if the Rancor would have been better had it been CGI or it would have been better if it had more time as a you know real prosthetic thing. My um, my heart says the Rancor. Um, my head says the Balrog. I guess. You know, I I've got a real thing for like practical effects like that, and I've got a, a soft yeah, yeah, spot for like puppetry and and whatever they use there. I always want to be a bit careful when because I do this all the time, but like almost dismissing it if it's CGI as being like it's CGI. But it's like, well, someone worked really fucking hard on that, probably. Oh, for probably fuck's sake! Fuck off! We're getting we're getting that from. <laughs> Somebody worked really hard on Cowboy no, no, no. Bebop live action. <laughs> <laughs> to clarify, what I just praised about Alien was how hard they worked getting all of those creative pieces together. Now, maybe if we're saying CG is not that creative, it's just you want a thing and you get it through your little computer. But like, I don't know, you, you we know you get really shitty CGI and shitty representations of things. The Balrog isn't just like high fidelity. It was a really great design. And it was represented yeah, very well by the CGI. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll give them credit. Like it, it's uh, you know, for something that's in the book for like just a couple of pages, like it does, a, you know, it's a great representation of it. So well, if I could um, get your opinion on this as well, you guys. So like, I love oneers in in movies and stuff. Just when they have a really long shot and everyone's nailing their lines and just complicated things that happen in them. Um, so uh, in Red Light, Red Light Media. If, I, I say famously said in the prequels thing that he's talking about the opening of Revenge of the Sith, and he's like, "Yes, it's a one-er, but it's in CGI, so it's not that impressive." It's like, yeah, they're right. I any other thoughts you guys have on that, or is that just correct? It, it's a hundred percent correct. Yeah, like the, there's no skill involved in that. That's just like that's just work. Like that's just like animating a cutscene in a video game. You, you know, it's determined. It's determined entirely by the power of your computer. Um, when it involves actors having to remember their lines 
um, and a bunch of stuff like say it's like an action scene and a, a bunch of pyrotechnics have to go off everyone has to hit their mark um, that's impressive because you know that took a lot of work um, as you know because like <laughs> It's it's a t- it's a tough one because well, I mean, you know, Star Wars was done practically. Those were done with models, and and uh, the first trilogy is is the one that. Uh, well, no, they're the only they're the only ones to me, um, and so it, it looked unbelievable how they managed to edit it, and you know, George Lucas's wife was uh, you know uh, quite very instrumental in that. How they edited the the uh, the actual models of the ships, how they gave the star destroyer so much kind of weight and and uh, ominous power, and then you uh, yeah you have like fifty thousand people working on a CGI cutscene and it it looks pretty, it looks nice, uh, but again it's. I know. I just think there's something much more impressive when it's actually model uh, done by model. And the I don't disagree with that. Can, can, can I say as well? Like, there's people in chat who are like 3D animators who fucking want to kill me right now. Well, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, this, this is like just to clarify, right? I, I'm not saying in the slightest that there's no work involved in this. There's a shit ton of work, and like it's impressive on a technical level. The the point I'm making is that there's no there's no margin for error with it though. Because you're, every single factor that you're working with is completely under your control. If it's if it's computer animated, you can make things move in exactly the way you want it to move. You can you can have every every aspect of your shot the exact way you want it. If it's something that involves actors um, and just pointing a, ca- a camera at people and having them do things. The margin for error is huge because people fuck up. People forget the lines. People um, the miss their marks. I'm begging you. I want to do my side now. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Moller. So, uh, chat, strap in. I think you're both entirely wrong. Uh, okay. the, when it comes to CG one is what I find impressive is going to have different parameters compared to a IRL one, if we call it that. I don't know. Which I have a serious weak spot for. I find them amazing. Then I get really enticed. The Revenge of the Sith one, I thought it was a fucking retarded comment to say it doesn't matter. It's uh, CGI, so whatever. Every the amount of aspects you have to get correct when CGI animating all this kind of carnage all at once, getting everything accurate, having everything in terms of physics match properly, and then the cinematography is still a thing just because you can correct it in post. I mean, we can have a thousand shots. The Stanley Kubrick was like famous for that. That's reducing the margin forever for er- for error. Sorry. Um, I find that this is we we've accidentally gone too far sometimes when discussing this, and that CGI artists get shat all over because of the fact that uh, their work is considered dime a dozen that anyone could fill their shoes. While something in this IRL much more complex, the actor has to nail their lines, the director has to get everything in order, and it's just like accidentally making it seem as though this is, is worthless. When uh, I don't know that you could have done it in a different way, that opening in Revenge of the Sith. I think it's really good. I think it gets us right into the action. It's following the Anakin and Obi-Wan POV. The world is like spinning around them as they're trying to avoid all kinds of things, showing you that Coruscant is currently getting obliterated by all these armies. It's absolute chaos. Like The idea that it's like, well, it's not very impressive because it's in CGI. I was just like, damn, dude. That takes away from all the different things that had to go right to make sure this shot was as good as it was. And I, I feel the same way about the um, the Mooma kill initial battle in Lord of the Rings. It's one of my favorite parts of all of it. And if someone said, yeah, but it's CGI. Like, oh, that's fine. <laughs> like, the Rohirrim smashing into the elephants was done amazingly with the CGI. Um, mm-hmm. And I would, I would, if I knew anyone who led that project in someone and out, I would congratulate the fuck out of them instead of saying, you guys could have done it in practical, but you got a little bit, got a little bit scared, didn't you? So you went with the safe option. I, I, well, no, no, I one, no one it, said it that. None of then. us said that. We're just having a preference on which, uh, well, on which we, uh, uh, on which Mark opening. Because to me, the opening of Star Wars is so. Uh, it's just two things. It's simple, and yet it has such weight to it because the the tininess of the uh, Princess Leia ship versus the uh, power of the the Empire and the Star Destroyer, and um, I just it's just a, a personal preference. I'm not undermining any of the work that the CGI artists do, but you know, you know, it's it's a very 
if busy you, opening I, I, I with the, lots of stuff going on and I, I think that the difference, right? And again, correct me if I'm wrong, right? But the CGI removes the need for invention. It removes the need for for having to be resourceful. Because if you've got enough money to spend on animation for for whatever scene you want to do, then you can make it happen. And you, like I said before, you can control every single aspect of it. Um, yeah, you you have to put a shit ton of work in to make sure all the physics behave correctly. Uh, you know that everything looks and and acts and moves exactly as it should be. But you can tweak every single aspect of that. It, it's all just ultimately in a computer program, and you can tweak it till your heart's content. Um, and I guess, like, if you're talking about using practical effects over that um, instead, there's a lot more invention that has to be put into it because you have to get really clever about how you're going to get your your shot. I, I guess you you have to think of interesting new ways to to use your camera. Like the, a good example of this sort of thing would be, say, in Terminator Two one of those cut scenes from it where they are removing the um they're going to like alter the chip inside the terminator's head um and so it's done with a combination of um a, what you think you're looking into a mirror but it's actually a model of arnold on one side and linda hamilton and her twin sister standing mm. in the same outfit and everything the effect is to create the impression that you're looking in a mirror while they are are performing this intricate operation on the the t800 that is fucking genius work like the amount of thought that had to go into creating a shot like that incredible they 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 were it was a combination of being really lucky that they had linda hamilton and she has a twin sister that looks exactly like her and great that's all fine but they they had to think up how they were going to do that and then move the camera in such a way that it behaves the same way a mirror would the you know having a, a prop of Arnold and then the real one in the the so, the so called mirror, you could do all of that with CGI, and make it look great, but that inventiveness isn't there because you didn't have to be inventive. You could just create it. I, I think that's the difference for me. And you ever know how much inventiveness is in CGI? Well, I mean, if you, I mean, take the prequel, you, you've been talking why, about. Why would you the, need to be inventive for CGI, though? Like, <laughs> well, so, you can represent like, whatever you want on screen. Like, there's no, right? there's so, work. With um, Black Panther, for example, that was hideous. Uh -huh. And the reason we should be so critical of that is like, this is a studio that's had so much experience and so much blah, 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 blah. Critical, critical, critical. But then, what if a studio says, like, you guys have no idea what you're talking about? We had one day to make that scene between two guys. In fact, what we did for that amount of time was incredibly impressive, but because you th you think so limitedly, you would just assume, oh, it's bad work. When I my response to that would probably be like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, you were restricted by time, and I guess I'm not saying that you did a bad job personally, but it's turned out looking like crap, you know. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, if it looked incredible, and we found out one guy worked on it for an hour, but he's just like the greatest CGI artist in history, and he's just he's fucking nailing all, and he knows all these shortcuts and creative ways to. I was going to say, there's inventions happening all the time with CGI. We just don't know what to call them. Like um, all these different ways of showing reflections or uh, simulating physics. We're just unfamiliar with what they would even be called or what they even mean. But there's CGI artists out there and probably in chat who would be able to tell us. And they would they would give these these words or phrases. And we'd be like, I have no idea what octamental refraction is. And there's a guy who's like, well, I invented it. And it's revolutionized CGI. But thanks for not ever recognizing it. I'd be like, <laughs> oh. And I, I feel like it's a field that... I'm more aware as time goes on of how much I don't know about it. And I've got family members who are involved with uh, certain projects for movies where they make incredible things. And then they, they like look at me awkwardly when I describe anything as good or bad CGI wise. I'm like, oh shit, what context am I missing? And they're like, well, what you probably don't know. And then I'm just like, oh shit. And I learn a lot about it. And I guess all I'm advocating for is kind of like, we should probably avoid being too flippant with uh, CGI work. Even though I'm a victim of this myself, I make fun of CGI all the time, and I often disparage it compared to physical stuff. But I, but I think, I'm, but you know, it's, it's how it's used and utilized, and uh, <clears throat> I don't think you can deny that, that one of the prequels' major flaws is the absolute over reliance on CGI. Agreed. Um, from from so scenes which should feel realistic and organic when they're just sat down in you know a chamber or something. 
it's all green screen. It's all blue. Well, it's blue screen with Lucas, but it was all blue screen. And so none of the, uh, none of the things in the, the room look real. It, it, the floors fake, you know, everything looked fake. And it, like to Camino. me, I find it very difficult to connect when I, I my brain's telling me this is all so fake. Yeah, um, I think that's yeah, fair. It, it works absolutely brilliantly when you're doing firefights in the uh, in the sky between multiple ships. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but but <laughs> yeah, Lucas to me just just blew it with the prequels with that over reliance, and he should have had the blend of uh, practical and. Um, and CGI, and it, uh, it's kind of sad that he was sort of so powerful by then that he really didn't have anyone to say, George, no. Uh, and, I, I do agree, though. Even I, I don't know if you guys have seen videos on this, like, there's a lot more in the prequels that are practical than I ever realized. Um, and I get told off for it by people every once in a while because, uh, like, uh, you know, the, the pod racing scene, like, all of the crowd, that was all physical but it looks like it's you could be i could easily have been told it was cgi and i believe you um but there's a lot more that's going on in those films as practical than i than i thought previously is, is kind of the point i'm making and i wonder about stuff like that where um if we're doing specific scenes because i agree with you i'm assuming you're referring to camino where obi-wan's walking around in what is essentially just a green square and he's just like oh wow well, look at this. to be honest there's, there's multiple different places coruscant there, coruscant's yeah. a bigger there's, fender yeah as there's well. so many there's so many scenes in the prequels where they're just in a fucking room and even that is cgi yeah you know that th that's what's really disappointing because you i think it does come across in the actors a little bit because what are they what are they working with nothing you yeah, know they, like, they, they even claim that and i understand that completely yeah uh, well even i mean uh you mcgregor said so though didn't he he's just like how how can you respond when it's you, you're responding to like a you know a blob or or just a blue screen? How can you really I, uh, engage with your environment? I, I think the bit that, that Red Letter Media pointed out really well was like the bit where Obi Wan's facing off against um, what's his Grievous. name the Grievous yeah and Grievous is like he's got like four lightsabers on the go and he makes his yeah. arms all swing round and he's like literally feet away from Obi-Wan, but Obi-Wan just doesn't move while this is going on because Ewan McGregor clearly didn't know what the fuck he was supposed to be like facing off yeah. against. Whereas in reality, you'd be like, oh shit, like any of these could hit me at any second. I better be on my guard here. And it, yeah, I think that really is just the failing of like lazy overuse of CGI and just, you know, I, I think this I, is the thing. Like, it's poor directing as well because you've got to direct yeah, your is, actors. This is, to... this is where I would I would draw the line on this sort of thing. Is that it's never down to the people who make the CGI. Like they are doing the best with whatever time and resources they've got available. It's down to the director and how they employ it. Hmm. You know, so and if, if they just if they use it as an easy stand-in for like having to do like complex shots with pyrotechnics or whatever it might be, uh, that's on them ultimately someone said Moller's argument sounds like a bunch of labor theory of value bollocks does that sound anything like i've been talking about I, I i i totally get the point that you're making that like doing cgi like on, on a technical level is is not something you can just like dismiss as like oh yeah you just you just type some words on a computer and it just makes all the stuff happen and it's easy as fuck it's intensely difficult and and complex um, and I get the point that you're making about like we shouldn't just discount that as like it's not hard. To, it, sorry, it's not um, it's not a difficult thing to do because yeah, it clearly like is. What I'm talking about is a much more unpopular but difficult perspective because it's just we, I feel like our understanding of practical effects in movies is much higher than our understanding of what is involved in CGI. At the same time, it feels very easy to spot good CGI versus bad CGI. Um, and so, and, well, it, yeah, yeah, because we're literally laboring from one film to another now, and everyone's doing it. So it's not like we yeah. have a a uh, you know, oh, the the new Star Wars is coming out, or oh, this one uses you know great special effects and whatnot. No, everything, everything we're going between, every Marvel thing that that's coming out, June, the Eternals, and and you know, some of it's done incredibly. Like I think the special effects in June are absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, uh, but. It's weird because the buildings that they're in, they feel practical. They feel, you know, they feel legit. Um, is it, is, yeah, is on. it one of those situations now where you just, 
you don't appreciate it when it's done well, but then you, you only really comment on it when it's done badly. I think so. Well, like, as mm. if I told you, and pretend for a second this is the world we live in, that sure. everything in CGI, everything in Dune's locations was CGI, all of it was CGI, would yeah. that make you, like, I assume you'd just be like, wow, they did a fucking good job then, I guess. Yeah, I'd, be, I'd just be like, wow, that I, I, that's great, because I actually, you know, thought this, 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 and this was practical. But I guess so, what I'm trying to bring up was like it doesn't prompt you to say anything like "Whoa, guys, you should have done it impractical." As long as they no, do it, no, well no, 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 it, no, not if it, no, if it works, it works. Right, right. And if and if, and if it's worked through CGI uh, instead of practical, fine, so be it. Um, uh, but it's it's it, I, to to me, it's when my brain is saying this ain't real. No, I'm, I'm with uh, you and, on and, that. And, yeah, and, that's, and that's what causes the uh, the dis the, the disconnects. And like, like you know, the end of like Black Widow for fuck's sake. I mean, that's just a fucking, that's just a joke. It's an absolute joke. Well, yeah, uh, and the, uh, you mentioned Jurassic Park. I assume, yeah. uh, because that marries practical effects with CGI gorgeously. Yeah, it it, do, it does both, and and I still think the T Rex. Uh, one like one of my friends was just texting me about it, but uh, I I I absolutely believe that 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 t-rex from 1993 uh is still one of the greatest cgis that they've done there's uh it, it blows so much of the modern stuff out of the water with just how well it uh it integrated into the film and um and that's going you know 28 well we're nearly 30 years nearly 30 years a couple of years removed from 30 years of uh jurassic park um so yeah i i think pro probably a lot is down to the wow i guess now you can't just say director you got to say studio yeah, uh, yeah studio and committee uh because as we as we know the fight scenes for marvel films are already planned out before the directors even got on board um so the beats of the film have already worked out been worked out before uh they come in to to do their thing so and that's so it, it is feeling so jarring because Black Widow was just like shite, <laughs> fight shite, <laughs> back to shite, and then back to fighting shite. Well, yeah, it's, that whole it's thing very jarring, great, yeah, for sure. And there was really yeah. bad composting of the film as well, which is like a whole other thing where a piece of something is added to a piece of something else. And funnily enough, um, you know, they did that in like way older films what's the process called where you play the movie behind the person and you record that uh, i don't know somebody said enunciate your t's as i'm a yorkshireman i'll fucking speak oh, <laughs> real screen, real screen scottish projection. guys don't do t's either we real just swallow projection. them um the, i was also gonna bring up as well so it's like the major drawback of all of you here is he just goes on a tangent like goes off of the weeds of the stream it's like so this is referencing predator specifically the special effects are fucking phenomenal right and then, funnily enough, the new Predator, something I hated about it, because I mean, you guys saw it, right? The, the Predator? No, uh, I, 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 I quit after, uh, I think it's Alien vs. Predator 2. Right, well, they had the practical done. one, but then they had this super cool CGI one, and he has armor skin, and he ha like he's so cool, he rips the head off the practical one. Fuck that guy. And then he's like bouncing around and doing all the CGI bullshit. It's like it, it's indicative of our, I think, transition from uh, older films to newer films that there's a reliance on it. I hate mm. it myself. I'm with you guys completely on this. I just want to, I feel like there's, there's aspects that we've got to be careful with because there's some CGI that's not only amazing, but some. Yeah, that, uh, phrasing, goes... phrasing could be better. Can, can we, all right, tell you what, I will, I will propose a toast then to the, the hard-working people in, in oh. the CGI industry. Well, funny we, enough, we appreciate you all and thank you for your effort, your work. And we do and try all, to do and all who's sailing you. It was real BBC that uh, I think a photo got pulled up from the cast or the, the crew as well of, of Doctor Who and I think a joke was made like, oh, these are the, those horrible people that As was like, well, to be fair, a lot of these people are hard workers who are just <laughs> yeah. making the stats, you know, and trying to make everything work. And it's like, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Get... get can I make a, a slightly different point and go off on a tangent here? Um, do it. Your yeah. screens, come, uh, come on and do it now. I'm going to be here at like six in the morning, still fucking talking about this shit. Um, <laughs> but no, it, when I you hope. mentioned it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mauler, when you mentioned the Predator from from the Predator, you know the, the <laughs> new one, how it's got armored skin, and so you Super know, cool. 
yeah well here's the problem it creates right everyone's blasting away at it with their with their machine guns and stuff and the bullets are just bouncing off it um and so they, they end up having to hit it with grenades that that still doesn't do it the, the they end up like blowing arms off it eventually and then the main character i think has to fucking throw a bomb in its mouth or some fucking shit like that <laughs> the, the, the point is though it, it's like a boss fight in a video game where you've got to gradually wear down yeah. its, its health bar whereas in in the original predator movie like we we discussed it establishes quite early on this thing's just as vulnerable to bullets as a human is and yeah. so it's not like super super durable or anything um, and dutch kills it by dropping a fucking log on its head mm. you know and that's that's great because it, it it humanizes it in to the extent that you can. Like it's still a major threat to them, but it can be killed and it has to be killed through inventive means. Yeah. Whereas in the new one, it's it's just wearing it down by shooting it constantly. And it th this same stupid shit filtered over into the new Ghostbusters movie where they, they all just have to kind of shoot Gozer with their proton packs. It's like everyone just shoot it over yeah. and over again until you can like blow it up until you, <laughs> you shoot you shoot something else that allows the traps to open up yeah but that's that's not smart <laughs> like i don't know how to i don't know how else to say that but it, like that's not good writing like, no but it's it, it, your only the... solution to the bad guy is just shoot it lots but uh, you know you kind of feel though that <clears throat> nowadays of course there'll be like if pred if what what how do you think okay here's the question how do you think it let's say there's been no predator movies and until today and and predator is released at the cinema you know just imagine certain things are tied you know tidied up that they would be today but it but it's exactly like it is uh, you know. <laughs> I imagine how the Guardian would fucking review it. <laughs> yeah, you know, just, just exactly, and, and and how would they like? Ah, uh, you know, what would people be saying? Well, it's, it's boring. You know, like a fight scene at the beginning in a, in a village, and then they're just like prancing around the jungle, and then they're just getting picked off, and they're just like, "Ah, he dropped the log." You know, you just you just don't know how they would take it because nowadays, of course, uh, there's this this idea. Uh, with with films like this, oh, you got to have your you got to have fight scene at X point in movie. Then you got to have yeah. another fight scene, and and then the, the creature's got to get it's got to get stronger, Dexter. <laughs> you got to get stronger <laughs> and stronger. You know, the creature's just got to get stronger and stronger and tougher. And it's no, it's it's less is more at, 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 at times, and and it's just unnecessary. You know, another, we got to. A bigger ra, 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 predator, and it's got a stronger rama ra, 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 predator. No, that's not interesting. No, that's no. not interesting stuff. They did uh, it you know, Jurassic Park, the Indominus Rex, it can go invisible. Yeah, <laughs> what the and, fuck? And like, didn't it just do it? <laughs> walk out the door, and then it never did it again after that. Uh, it's the remember. bit where it, where it removed its own tracking chip, and they're like, oh, oh it clawed it out. Right. Why? Oh. Because it remembered getting it put in. How does it even fucking know what it is? <laughs> it's really Why smart. Why does it even understand that that's significant? It'd be making fucking nuclear bombs if it could fucking work that shit out. I, I swear in the next fucking movie, right, they're, they're going to have satellite tracking of these dinosaurs, right? And then all of a sudden, all the screens are going to blink out and they're going to be like, oh shit, what happened? The dinosaurs hacked our network. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Wait, wait, wait. It's gonna happen. It's, it's gonna, gonna happen, happen man. Even, even better, written. they they counter the hack. They stop the hack. They're like, wait, why are our satellites not working? It's like the space pterodactyls. They've got the satellites. <laughs> the, the pterodactyls are on the satellite. <laughs> Hell yeah, they have little, little astronaut helmets. It'll look great. How can how can they survive in space? Well, these were special pterodactyls that were made to withstand pressures and temperatures. And oh, I'm just well, you know, they on. spliced them with the uh, toad DNA or whatever in the first one. This is astronaut DNA that they spliced them with. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes sense. They, they've spliced, spliced it with, spa with space, space shuttle, shuttle DNA. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it, it, we joke, but like if oh, an alien no. landed, it, they use that as an excuse. Like, we've covered up the DNA. Now we've got space T Rex. <laughs> space. <laughs> <laughs> Jurassic Park is they found a way. 
This is the thing. Uh, uh, Fallen so Kingdom was like... Shot, no, the final shot will be like a T-Rex running along the surface of the moon and roaring <laughs> at the earth. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Some fucking idiot on Twitter will be like, iconic, the greatest yeah. graphic. Ever. Yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll go silhouette itself on the Earth, and then people will be like, well, yeah. The angle will have the Earth in its jaws. You know, that's that there. Cinema. It's saying how yes. fragile nature is compared to the ravenous man aunt. Fuck off. Oh, the magic of cinema. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Oh. I just, I just wanted to drop in. I wanted to drop in a scene actually from the Predator like redub that I, I just thought would be perfect. Uh, give me one second just to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? Where we oh, oh, we're going here, are we? Shit out of my face! Bunch of slack jawed faggots around here. This stuff will make your goddamn sex a sore drag. Just like this. Yeah, drop this on your short ass plane. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you make your sex a sore And this song is wake me up before you go. go yeah. <laughs> Oh man, honestly, there's there's some genius shots in this. I'm just trying to think uh, what's the good ones. Um, where is it? Dodge Take a drop and let it loose. Blow some shit up. Get on. Run them down, grab those hostages, <laughs> chew some gum, drink some rum, treat ourselves to a bean burrito for a job well done, and bounce back across the border before anybody knows we were there. Ah <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I, wanna, I, I, see, I need to see all of this. Oh, it's glorious, yeah. Let's see. Because uh, I don't want to put too much on it because it gets yeah, copyrighted yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, shit, my God! Uh, I'm going to have me some fun. I'm going to chew me some gum. <laughs> Get drunk on rum. Hot dogs and buns. <laughs> China. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Come on. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> screw me, I'm here. Screw me. <laughs> Come on, screw me, I'm here. Oh, Tommy, that was wonderful. Oh, Tommy, oh. Nothing to be ashamed of. It's just a... What are you doing? Is that an alarm? Are you setting an, an alarm? Is that an alarm, Tommy? Tommy, don't be ashamed! Don't be ashamed! <laughs> don't be ashamed! <laughs> don't be ashamed! <laughs> don't be ashamed. <laughs> Tommy! It's just some deleted uh, scenes, yeah. Tommy the yeah. Predator. Yeah, those are the first first takes. I think that that was genuinely my favorite line of the redub. It's like, this stuff will make your goddamn sex as Rex. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, but yeah, Predator. An all right movie. Mediocre. Right. You know, fair to middling, oh. I would say. Oh. Some action in it. Some characters. Heathenous, heathenous language, sir. Heathenous. <laughs> I fucking kill for a movie like Predator today. Uh, it's just you, you just know the way. Like you look at a film like that, and you know th there'll never be a film of that sort again. Like not just of that kind of writing quality, but just that style, that like balls to the wall action. And yeah, that, that's that's a different era, sadly. And it just feels like it's it's kind of gone. I just don't know what they could ever do to bring movies like that back. I could see something, but he'd get you burned. <laughs> oh no, we're, we're veering into Doomstream again. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, everything's fine. So sorry. <laughs> Great, I love Predator. Um, but I do have um, I do have a lot of super chats here, and um, if we sorry with you guys, I guess we can go through them or, yeah, or yeah, a few yeah. of them anyway. All right, cool, man. Um, 
So, Fight the Club says, can't think of a better pair to gush about this classic. Well, it's a trio now. Uh, still hoping to see a drinker and G-Man Live stream up for John Woo's classic Hard Boiled. Greetings mm. again from the critical drinker Fred drunk posting Facebook group. <laughs> yeah, I'm in that now. I, I got accepted into joining the group, so now I, can, now I can see what they're doing. And it's good stuff. Um, Ayakashi Ronan says, uh, any chance to see you and Gary take on Fight Club, an all-time favorite re-watching Predator as we speak? Could feel my testosterone levels hit 10,000. Cheers. Um, yeah, I would I would do Fight Club. I mean, I've already reviewed it as like a drinker recommends, so you can you can catch my review for sure. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to talk about it. Um, RRTNZ says, Hail Drinker and you sexual tyrannosaur. And as, <laughs> mate, that woman is not worth it. What? Um, <laughs> She's so totally this, worth it. Yeah. Oh my God. I was literally shaking. Shaking. <laughs> um, Saw this in 1987, and my wife and I rewatch it every year. You've got a great marriage. Wow. Fucking love it. Um, yeah. So have one on me, boys, because if it's booze, we can drink it. <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll drink to that, man. That's a good mm. one. Um, RRTNZ says, uh, sorry, uh, Nick B says, this super chat will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus, just like me. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Chuxenhausen, yes, I've been waiting for this. Can't wait to hear it tomorrow. It's Thanksgiving here in America. And good God, my family talks more than Ghostbusters 2016. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. That's funny. That, why, why? I don't know. That's what, what, what I loved about that movie. It was just how none of them could shut the fuck up for more than two seconds. They just have to be talking, talking, talking all the time. Everyone has to be laughing all the time and making jokes. Yeah, they couldn't use gaps for their comedy at all, which is like a big part of a lot of deliveries, is timing everything right. But they would just keep yeah. talking. See that scene in uh, the original Ghostbusters where they are in the elevator and they power up the proton pack for the first time and mm. there's barely any talking. I was so fucking bored during that scene. I was just <laughs> yeah. desperate for, for people to be cracking jokes and for things to be exploding. And yeah, that's why, that's why the original Ghostbusters is so shit. Yeah, it just it doesn't understand comedy. Twenty sixteen, baby. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, so also from Chucks and Housen, according to Cobra Kai creator John Hurwitz, season five is almost done filming with number four ending on a nasty cliffhanger. <gasps> uh, with Terry Silver coming back, do you believe he'll nearly kill someone this year? I think he'll kill everyone this year. Uh, Terry I think, Silver. I think, I think he's going to kill someone. I think it's actually going to kill one of the one of the cast will die. I I would say it's possible. Uh, I felt that way about um, Better Call Saul, which I finished recently. As you've seen it, right? Mm. No, uh, no, <laughs> no. I've seen um, uh, half of the first season. Oh, and uh, a bunch of clips on YouTube. Where are you drinking? Have you seen it? Uh, no, I haven't. Um... I think we were chatting about this at one point. So I watched a couple of episodes of like the first season and just kind of didn't get into it. It didn't grab me in the same way Breaking Bad did. Um, I talked to one of my friends about it and he was like, yeah, you got kind of power through the first couple of seasons and then it gets good. And I thought that's, yeah. that's a lot of episodes to get through before it gets good. Well, I'm not going to review it or anything, but I was just going <laughs> to say like, uh, there's a lot of characters in it that aren't in Breaking Bad and we're getting really close to the events of Breaking yeah, Bad. Yeah. It was like, what's going to happen to all these people? <laughs> like, yeah, um, they don't die. yeah. I mean, it's great that it's gone on this long. Like, it's great they've obviously managed to find their groove with it and make a go of it. Um, has it got one more season left? Hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, is that filmed? Part. Is that filmed and done, or or, or uh, is I it going to be on a is. delay because of? Bit okay. What I understand, mm -hmm. the later seasons are like 10 episodes. This one's going to be 14 and it's six or seven a piece, I think, something like that. They're doing it in two parts, much like the last season of Breaking Bad. Mm. Uh, the next one is Does this dress make my ass look big? Said uh, <laughs> regarding Ghostbusters 2016 and sitting on the toilet for two hours, drinkers open bar. Uh, more appropriate to be on your super shack catch up. Never seen Braun um, and Dag TV shows. <laughs> Uh, no, I haven't, I'm afraid. Um, Frank Spasato, 
said, Drinker, do you remember any movies from this year or were all of them as forgetful as the average night out in town? Um, any you still enjoy you uh, now? Yeah, I mean, it's not been a great year in cinema. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bullshit you. Um, the only one that stuck with me as being kind of interesting was Dune, probably. Um, nothing that's come out of Marvel I gave a shit about. I don't know, you guys? Anything? Uh, obviously, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Oh, no. That's coming out soon, isn't it? Is it out? Oh, I think. Is it out now? I think oh, so. Oh, fuck. Um, yeah, you guys loved No Time to Die, right? So there's that. Oh, Jesus yeah, that's great. I, I, it was so forgettable, I forgot it even existed. Oh, shit. Nobody came and out. it's making a shit ton of money. Nobody, nobody yeah, yeah, nobody. There but you it's, go. it's that was still good. probably just going to break even, but it had to make like 900 million to break even, and it's doing really, really well uh, internationally. And then Panic I liked is... the Suicide Squad. I liked Dune. I liked The Guilty. I liked, it wasn't yeah, that liked, worth it. Yeah. Yeah, the the was Suicide really Squad was fine. Um, it wasn't like wasn't particularly memorable i just it was just like fun i guess like it didn't really make a huge impression uh i'm just looking at the eternals numbers actually to see how they're getting on so uh what are they at 139 million worldwide uh, what, eternals eternals is about 330 million 340 million oh, i'm worldwide. just looking at sorry i'm looking at the domestic uh yeah so <clears throat> But uh, yeah. it's it's like if you see the dailies now, it's gone. Well, yeah, it's, you're it's at, you're past that point now, aren't you? Mm. Uh, yeah, three hundred thirty nine million. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City uh, opened up uh, on the twenty third of November. It did uh, on the third. Uh, it did nine hundred and thirty-five thousand on the <laughs> first day. Hey, no, that no, 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 no. Uh, and uh, on its main, because that was like the the night before type of thing. So be nice. Uh, on its opening day, it did two point five million. Wow, that's some big numbers right there. I what think was its budget, budget is three pound fifty in a packet of all brand. So <laughs> there you go, that it's working out. Uh, I want to find out what this budget is. I want to know what this budget is because I bet it's fucking cheapest. I bet it's about twenty five million budget. Uh, it's got the it's got the look of a sub fifty million movie because there's no particularly big names in it, is there? No. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, 40, oh, Jesus Christ. It's got a budget of 40 million? That's John Wick territory, isn't it? So it's got to make about 100 million to break even. And it's on about three at the moment. And it's on three and a half million. So you're saying there's a chance. So <laughs> I mean, there's legs, and then there's legs. I'm like, fuck me. Well, maybe <laughs> you know, if you if you're a fan of Resident Evil, and uh, none of the fucking people look anything like the fucking characters uh, that they're meant to to represent, then I don't know. I don't know. Maybe uh, there's gonna again be a disconnection. Call me a call me a crazy optimist, right? Or or just really naive. But like, it feels like the Resident Evil game shouldn't be that hard to make into a movie. Like the, the you'd feel the, so. all you'd the all so. the stuff all the stuff is laid out for you. You just have to be somewhat faithful to the story, and you're gold. Well, the director is he's quoted as saying something like, uh, "He wanted to cast people that felt like the spirit of the characters." Right. Uh, yeah. That that's code for someone who looks nothing the fuck like yes, them. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <Sure. laughs> All right, well. Ay 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 ay. Oh, Jesus. Uh, right, next one. Um, yeah, final Chanel Inc. says, "Drinker, you sublime spirit animal. Australia demands you watch Mister In Between, expertly written by the main actor. I know you'll love it. Cheers, Mister In Between. Uh, I'm not familiar, man. Um. 
Mikey Gussler says, Hail gents, hope everyone is having a happy Thanksgiving. Got something in the mail today from Shout Factory. It's Krampus, the naughty cut on 4K and an exclusive poster ready for Christmas marathon. Um, have you gents seen any of the different versions of the Grinch? Personally, my favorite is the Jim Carrey one because I grew up with it, but also Jim Carrey puts in a great performance and I like its art style. Um, I mean, I've seen the Grinch with the Jim Carrey version. It's the one I'm most Obviously. familiar with, I think, to be honest with you. I, I, I have not seen a lot of Grinch stuff. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a... Because it's a Dr. Seuss thing, isn't it, the Grinch? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not like a massive Dr. Seuss fan, I'll, I'll be honest. But um, yeah, the, the Jim Carrey one's the one I know the most about, I guess. Um, the And also from Mikey Gussler, the original cut of Predator 2 was very intense and received an NC-17 rating as a result of its graphic violence. There was also a good number of subplots taken out as well and lore behind the Predator. Mm. I didn't actually know that, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like I say, I like Predator 2. I think it's a pretty decent movie and a, a decent enough follow-up to the first one. Um, doesn't reach the same level, but man, I'd love to see the uncut version, if that's the case. Um, that's the time of sequels where you're like, all right, all right, I see what, you, what you're trying to do. That's a neat idea. I wonder what we'll do next time. These days, it's like, no, please, <laughs> please stop. Um, the Craig Lee Lawrence experience, not ready for the new female Predator movie. I think it's called Prey. Uh, Jesus, please make it stop. No amount of liquor can make this franchise fresh again. Um, yeah, I'd be inclined to agree, really. Not allowed. Um, I just think, you know... The Aliens vs. Predator movies like took away all the coolness of the Predator, and then Predators just was just a two hours of slop. Like it just made no impression on me. And the Predator was just an absolute bad joke with no punchline. Yeah, um, I still have some level of like you remember uh, the first season of New Who, right, with Chris Fraggleston, where they reintroduced the Dalek. Yeah, like it, and they treat it very seriously, and it fucks everyone up. It's like Russell T. Davies is like, we're going to try and rescue the Dalek from being considered kind of goofy. Mm. I feel like someone could do that with the Predator at this point still and just be like, it's time to take it seriously again, guys. And not just make it bigger and not make it a bullet sponge. Yeah, because that shit doesn't um, intimidate me at all. I'm just like, oh, there's the CGI blob running around the jungle shooting everybody, I guess. And by the way, that was so annoying. It like attacks people openly in like a like a war environment, not intelligently picking them off or anything. Yeah. I just think like it would be tough to do a sequel now that's not just recycling the premise of the first movie. You know, just another team getting hunted by this thing. Yeah, like, you know um, what can you change? Like, well, you can change the location, I suppose. But like, the, the jungle is quite about the locations, time area, locations, and periods in time. I think that I would say would be the predator's strength. Yeah, as much as you can say like, oh, that's a little bit iterative. I'd be like, well, maybe they can earn back our trust with just that and nail it, and then they can try expanding. But like, please be fucking careful, because. Sometimes safer is better in terms of just look. We're gonna make a real good movie with a group of characters who have to find try and beat a predator that's trying to kill them. Have you seen Empire? No. Uh, on Netflix. What's uh, was about? Uh, it's about uh, it's set in like feudal. Uh, I think it's Korea, not Japan. Um. But it's set in like feudal Japan or Korea, can't remember which, and it's uh, zombies. I have seen King that. Sorry, not uh, kingdom, not yeah. Empire Kingdom Kingdom, not Empire. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and that's done really really well, and it's and it's a very you know it's earnest. It's not silly or anything like that. No, this is legit. I'll tell you why. Uh, it was scratching my itch that Game of Thrones season eight gave me, which was what it would be what i want to see a proper like zombies <clears throat> attacking castles and medieval defenses and i Kingdom. want the reason yeah yeah and i wanted the reason they lose to just be the sheer number right it's not that the defenses aren't good it's just that there's just so many zombies and that's a big payoff in kingdom at one point uh yeah you have seen kingdom you have seen it i've seen up to episode two of season two i've been waiting for free to oh well i mean war the season opener for season two is just fucking yeah. outstanding it's hmm. absolutely amazing yeah 
Yeah. I feel like I need to watch this. If it's oh, medieval uh, zombies, you that's would, ideal. You'd love it. It's done really, really <laughs> cleverly as well. It's not, <clears throat> again, it's not like stupid. Um, there's there's very specific things as to the reason why, and there are certain rules, and, and it's just very well acted, and it's very well put together, and the cast is great. Uh, absolutely great. So, yeah, I, I just started watching an episode, and that was it. I just, like, tore through two seasons. Um. So, yeah, if you put a predator, like, you know, you put a predator in... Uh, why does it have to be America? Why can't you put a predator in feudal Japan? Samurais versus a predator. Yeah, yeah. I want to see a I want to see a predator on the mean streets of Glasgow. <laughs> just I think it would bold. I think it would just leave. Just it's like there's nothing. It'd be like there's nothing worth killing here. I'm fucking off. All the women would just be asking it for a shag, and then <laughs> yeah. all the guys would just be trying to fucking glass it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be awesome. Yeah. I could just see it stumbling into bars and stuff, like just getting fucked up. <laughs> but just imagine a predator just with either one hand or two hand with the blades uh, versus uh, a group of samurai. Yeah. You kind of got that in Predators, didn't you? Where there was a, a Yakuza yeah. guy who tries to fight it with a samurai sword. And they kill each other. Um, yeah. 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 There's stuff that you can definitely, plenty of options. I just, I do understand what Drinker's point there. It's just like, is that what it would be locked into, though? That same format every time? Maybe. Well, it's a hunter. Um, is it, they, unless you break away from that, the, the, like I said, the premise is very simple for Predator. It, it's a hunter. It's a hunter coming down to hunt people. That's its premise. It's well, simple. It's, as much as I agree with you, and this is something I'm about to say that I don't even advocate for, but like, maybe we could explore the civilization. Maybe we could explore the other sects of the predator culture. But it's just like, I wonder if that's too difficult for people to pull off and if they could fuck it up. I don't do, know. You, do you want to go uh, that deep, though? Do you want to have, do you want to have everything explained or do you want to have this ambiguous class system? Oh, could it be fascinating to have like a wider civilization and predators are not strictly like considered these creatures that'll kill everybody this is it's a lot more complicated than that or should we stay away from it to maintain a level of mysteries like i i understand both perspectives mm. I, I don't know today i mean <laughs> certainly no i agree with you i wouldn't want to yeah. touch it today i like who knows what we'd end up with we're not gonna get like a star wars where it's like a really interesting little world <laughs> with all these different interactions and characters it's not like a you know like mandalorians for example it's like there's a chance mm. we can really have fun understanding that culture but I would be very if I saw them go to the Predator home world. Which is that something they're going to be doing with Prey or whatever? We're going to understand more, and it's just like, oh god, no, don't do it. You're going to fuck it all yeah. up. Yeah, I, I, I think the best, the way I would approach it, if I was in charge of like the Predator franchise, and like it was like right from the first movie, I would, I would just go from the the point of view of like less is more, and we'll, each movie will give you just little tidbits of you know, lore about the predators, like little hints about how they function and how their society is, but just never really give people a full picture. I would want to maintain that mystique about them because I think that's what makes them intimidating is the unknown yeah. about them. I, I definitely get that, yeah. Um, I mean, do I, you I don't know want the predator to go up to a kiosk and say, and they say, what's your name? And he says, God, predator. predator. <laughs> and he says, oh, you're on your own. Oh, you're predator solo. So we'll put you in a system as Predator Solo. I, I just, I, I love, <laughs> I'm just imagining on the Predator homeworld, like one of the Predators comes back from a tough day of hunting, like yeah. he's like <laughs> got fucked up and he's like leaking like fluorescent green blood and his wife Predator is there like, oh man, tough day at the office, huh? Like, yeah, I just, I'm going to the bathroom on. to clean up. Yeah. <laughs> Look what you've um, done to my beautiful floors, you fucking yeah. horrible man. <laughs> you've been gone for fucking months now, and I've been here cleaning all your fucking shit, and then you're just bleeding everywhere. <laughs> Do you guys ever... Uh, Ryan ever, Johnson's Predator. Ever familiar with Predator Concrete Jungle, the game? No. I uh, don't think so, no. So It was on PS2, I think, and the, it, it wasn't too bad from memory. I, I don't know how it holds up, but... The idea with that one was you open with a tutorial level of being like an overpowered predator, but you fuck up a mission of trying to kill somebody, and they take, it's humans, they take all of your gear, and then the predators pick you up, and they drop you as punishment onto a planet to basically get killed, because you, but you survive, you, you persevere, and then they give you the task of 
undo all of the damage you did by letting them take your tech. And so the the I guess what I'm saying here is like maybe that could be an interesting movie premise because it doesn't give you a lot of bonus predator information, but it also puts the predator in a position where the humans now have technology that could be very threatening. Because that's the idea in the game. They're trying to justify why humans would be more threatening than they are in the films and stuff. Um you know, that's an idea. A lot of people are saying that the, the, the comics and the books, there's loads of great ideas you could adapt from them. It's like, I, I don't doubt you. I just, like, we're, we're kind of just aiming to talk about the movies right now and that um, in reference to them, we've been stuck for creativity, for Predator to never go beyond. Group of people, one Predator kills them all, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Um, here's one from Mikey Gussler saying, Arnold doesn't show up in Predator 2 because of a pay dispute, not liking the idea of a Predator hunting in the city um, and feeling like it was a repeat of Predator 1. So why did he say yes to the Terminator sequels? <laughs> good point, <laughs> yeah, but, actually. Wasn't he initially not even on board of being the good guy in the second one, or am I misremembering that? For, Pre for Terminator, I mean. Because uh, I agree with that, actually. I don't know why I would agree to Terminator 2, but not Predator 2. I mean, I, I think the difference being, oh man, I could be wrong on this one. I think he just had a small role in Predator 2. Like it was still going to revolve around a different character and <clears throat> Dutch would have just been there as like a reference point or something. Right. Um, but yeah, he obviously didn't feel like it was like worth his time because it would have been coming out around about that time of Terminator 2. I can see why that was a bigger priority. But then I think this guy's making the point of like, well, why the fuck did you do like Terminator Three? Why did you do Genesis and and Dark Fate? Like, just these these oh, ever decreasing God. spirals of madness. We're in the money. Sure, the promotion yeah. of the Dark Fate, where she was like, nah, I wouldn't have accepted if this wasn't great for Sarah Connor's character. It's like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Linda, you wanted a payday. Shut up. She she yeah she passed up Terminator Three. Um, mm -hmm. At a time when she probably would have been still somewhat young enough to physically pull it off. Um, and she's like, yeah, it just wasn't a strong enough script. And you took Dark Fate? What the fuck? Dark Fate is definitely not strong, even compared to Terminator 3. Fucking disaster of a movie. I ain't uh, seen it. I don't, I yeah. don't plan to. Gonna yeah, see the next you. Terminator Wombo Fate, where it's gonna be all about <laughs> a new character, the savior of mankind, and the opening will just be a Terminator machine gunning John Connor, Robocop style, just to make sure we understand he's not important anymore. Yeah, just yeah, it could start off with like CGI Edward Furlong tied to a wall or something. And then just the only, the only, uh, the, the only good thing I took out of that was like CGI Linda Hamilton when when you get the flashback looked really good. <laughs> like that that was pretty pretty spot on as far as de aging goes. Didn't the Edward Furlong look really good though? Uh, yeah. yeah, I think so. Was, I think I was more because I was looking at her and I was like, oh man, she's really fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a treat with the first Predator movie. Turn the first, uh, Terminator. <laughs> I swear to God, I have. I have short-term fucking memory loss. <laughs> and, and, and that's like one of the first stages of fucking outside was also something. I was swear to God, I fucking got it. You know what be really insane, but also kind of cool, is if there was some deal with IPs with Predator and some other one. I mean, Fox are controlled by Disney now, right? Their IPs have gone to Disney. Did uh, Disney yeah. have Predator? Yeah, they will then, yeah. Gross. Um, so yeah. well, I guess we'd be at the point <laughs> where... My, imagine you had like a, a lower, lesser IP that's just some like James Bond knockoff of secret agents, and like they released the second in the series or whatever, and unbeknownst to literally everybody, she was, that's true. Everyone, but unbeknownst to everybody, like halfway through the film of it doing its regular format, the Predator just crashes the film, and like it becomes a survival thing for a bunch of like agents of some kind in some area, just as a shock to an audience instead of it being uh, known. I don't know if you could keep that a secret though, it'd be pretty impossible. And they'd no, want to they'd market give it, it away in the Predator. first trailer. <laughs> yeah, and they'd yeah. want to market it as a Predator film. You wouldn't want it to be kept that secret. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, M, M Shamalamalam, he uh, managed to keep a few things secret for his, um, you know, glass universe. And uh... I mean, I'd like to believe it maybe would be... I did describe it as insane to start this, but 
you know, like Mission Impossible, you have a team of maybe 10 dudes who are all trying mm -hmm. to do this particular job, but the building, the plan goes wrong, something trips, it all gets locked down, the police are outside, they're going to come in eventually, just making sure they get everything ready. Also, there's a predator in there, unbeknownst to everybody. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I feel like that could be fun, and you know, the first half of the movie is the heist <laughs> movie, and everyone's doing the heist things, but there's just these weird things that are happening, and weird scans and results, and just evidence of something, an additional entity that nobody really gets. It's like, why is it here? I feel like those scenarios could be fun to explore as well, instead of simply having the Predator fight Samurai, or having the Predator fight Knights. Uh, putting it in scenarios that are much more strange. I, yeah, I, I get what you're going for there. I, I think that's where you would have to go to just freshen it up, and not just have it be you know, Predator is up against a, a team of soldiers, yet again. You know, just yeah, like you say, it kind of drops in unexpectedly to a, a really bizarre scenario that just yeah. wouldn't be compatible normally with Predators. Um, but yeah, you'd have to just work really hard then to not make it a farce. Because that's what um, Alien 3 is. It's like, what if it were a prison? It's like, mm. oh, yeah, yeah, that could be interesting. What, what if you, you go experimental and um, you have the Predator land on a completely different planet uh, after a completely different race and um because they don't speak english of course we we don't get much english dialogue but everything's done through uh good writing you can you're going to have the predator be a, on the planet their main planet to start off with you can see certain rituals of how they prepare for the hunt um then it's sent away in this, this spaceship i don't know you could maybe try something like that land on a different completely different planet so we're trying to suss out what we're hunting um along with the predator i think they started adding weapon selection as part of predator stuff from avp onwards they would show like the predators setting up and grabbing weapons from walls and stuff mm, like, it's just like the back cave. yeah it's like oh that's cool i wonder about that do you think that's going too far or do you think that's that's fine well maybe you know maybe this equips differently maybe this equips completely differently because it's going after a completely different race so maybe this yeah, equips yeah. itself with uh more more bladed weapons uh um, do you like the idea or do you think this is a bit too almost gamey that they would have a certain amount of resources to quote unquote spend and what i mean by that is like the predator and predator one focused more so on attack that's why he has limited armor but another predator could theoretically lose the plasma caster to get more armor and that that's a, that's a, the choices they make when sent to these planets. They have to, mm. they get, you know, they can't just take all of their technology because that's unfair. They have to make use of a limiter of some kind. Well, well, what if what if that is integrated in the ceremony before yeah. the Predator leaves? You know, part of the ceremony is actually the selection of the, the weaponry or armor. Do you choose to go ultra defensive? Do you choose to go ultra offensive? Do you blend? If you blend, what do you blend? Uh, what weaponry? You know, so you, it could be part of the, the ceremony of uh, before they get uh, sent away to the planet to hunt. Yeah. Hmm. This fun stuff to explore. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. I think, there's some, okay. I think there's something there. I don't know what, but I think there's something there. Give us a Sweet. weekend to brainstorm and we'll come up yeah. with something for you. Yeah, it, it seems like our goal here is to chip away at it, but to not give like a full blasted lore page of like the predators mm. have a hierarchy consisting of blah blah blah. Which, by the way, they've done that in some of the extended material and people love it. Um, I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying uh, we need to take it slow, you know. Batman versus Predators is a really good comic, the first one. Have you seen that on like YouTube? The Batman versus Predator video is quite funny. <laughs> oh yeah 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 um yeah that's good stuff where he's fighting the joker to start with i think so yeah yeah need to give that a watch um the next one here is from the the swashbuckling scallywag praise be this is almost as good as the time i found out that the hot girl from base hunters music videos had a stint in adult entertainment uh, her <laughs> name is Eiler lee uh, do with this info what you will. I, well, I'm gonna have to, you know. Excuse me, I, I'm gonna go on. Uh, I'm Isla? gonna. Go on. <laughs> I'll, I'll be back Isla. in a minute. I just spell Isla. I, I L A. Uh, so it's spelled uh, A Y L A R, and then space L I E. Oh, uh, yeah, I see. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> Isla Lee. Uh, she's 37. 
uh, born in Iran. Uh, images of her. Um, she's kind of got a sort of Gina Carano look to her. A little bit of a Gina Carano look to her. Not massive. Not massive. She's just got little, little, you know, you can kind of just see a little. You know, little. It's kind of buff. No, no, just uh, phys- on her face. Oh, like okay. In her face, uh, she, you know, certain angles, she kind of has a little bit of a uh, Gina Carano. I'm just loving all vibe. these movie titles here. Uh, Somebody said you lost me at 37. That's got to be a young pup. Yeah. And if that is a young pup and you said that, you just you have no idea what you just missed out on. How many years of experience she could she could teach you shit. <laughs> there you go. Batman versus Superman versus Predator. There's a movie. <laughs> I yeah, I want to like the... keep superheroes away, actually, from these as much as possible. I feel like Superman's going to wreck the Predator, but who, yeah, who knows? Yeah, he, well, he'd they... fuck it up pretty bad. Well, they did a, a, a Superman versus Aliens comic um, miniseries in, in the in the nineties, and it was set on on a on a spaceship. So actually, the further Superman got away from Earth, uh, the more depowered he got because of the he was going away from the yellow sun. Uh, so he would actually, he, so he actually became more and more vulnerable to uh, the aliens. That was, that was How did it work out? Uh, he, he, he won. He won in the end. You know. oh. I was Bless him. Alien. Yeah. Uh, Unhinged says, doing Thanksgiving drinker style, basting the turkey with JD and stuffing the strippers with 20s. Nice. <laughs> I like it, man. Man after my own heart. <laughs> Just don't stuff the strippers with JD. You don't like that at all. Um, Mikey Gussler says, if I could make a film, I would do Aliens vs. Predators Colonial Marines. The film would follow an elite squad getting a call for help on a dangerous planet and gets in the crossfire of the two species. I mean, yeah, like done in the style of Aliens with Predators thrown in. That could be good. I, I could go with that. Pulse Rifles like- versus Predators. And there's another angle there if you could have these people who hate each other, like these two oppositions, but then they realize, you know, we've gotta we've gotta work together to beat this thing, whatever it is. Yep. Have some fun with that. Uh, Big Al says, Drinker, I'm not sorting Tatiana any more Ajax on tick until she ponies up the nine hundred quid she owes us. <laughs> Honestly, knows like a bastard dicing on that girl. <laughs> don't you besmirch tatiana nice analogy yeah uh uber geek did you enjoy that super chat session as it was great <laughs> it was great it was great fun a lot of fun uh, take her 610 I, ha- I had to literally call it i literally just had to say streets over because they were they were <laughs> they were they were <laughs> They're lovely, but they were super chatting to stop us from coming to this stream. <laughs> they hate me that much. <laughs> well, no, they would just be like, this, the super chat would just read, hi. Or the super chat would just read, this is to delay you. Or yeah. read, this is to make you read this out so you're late for the critical drinker stream. Just, and I was like, but, but if you let me go, then we can just go straight and have more hours of more people <laughs> talking. See, there was a time when I would try to do some charming wrap up to my streams and like thank everyone, but then every time I did it, there would just be more super chats coming in, just exactly like that. It's like, nah, you're not leaving. Chat, they know the game, they know the score, they you know, know it. They, they know exactly what they're doing. They like to play their games, and that's that's cool. Uh, it was take your six, fuck. yeah, take your six ten. Personally, I thought Predator 2 was kind of shite. I don't know, man. I think there's people here who would disagree with you on that one. It's a more controversial movie than the first one, for sure. Um, also, I, I just been made aware. Apparently, someone's uploaded portions of Jay's videos onto TikTok, and they're getting as much as 6.4 million views. Wow. Holy shit. That's some bullshit Jay's right a, there. Though. Jay's a TikTok star without even making a penny out of it. Yeah, I think Jay tweeted yeah. out, like, I have no idea what to do about this. It's just like, yeah, I, would, I don't know. Because obviously Ch- it's... Chinese-owned... TikTok, yeah. what do you do? What do you do? How do you go about? Um... I, I have no idea what. I don't even know the monetization. I don't copyright. know how TikTok works, so I don't, I don't even know, know how, if it's money. I don't know. I don't know. Um, because I'm not a fucking 15 year old girl, so I don't really. Yeah, I don't know much about TikTok. Um, like, I've seen people on like Twitter recently, uh, and they'd be like, they have like 
four thousand people follow them on Twitter, and and then, then their bio would say like two point five million TikTok, and they'd be like, well, you know, hey, how how uh, four thousand two point five million? I I don't get it. Yeah, it's weird. It's a it's a different world, and I don't like it. It's scary. Out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't like things that are different. Different, and I don't like it. Uh, Stephen Lanuto, hail drinker and the mighty as a good turkey day to you, fine gentlemen, as we celebrate Arnie interrupting the predator's Thanksgiving hunt. Gratitude. <laughs> yeah, I just want to have fun, you guys. Yeah. Uh, big flipping boss. I wonder if Tatiana looks like the predator. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> she doesn't have a mouth vagina in quite the same way the predator does. Put it that way. <laughs> it's, in a, it's in a different. Hers is, in hers a different is where way. it should be. <laughs> uh, Lady Art says, "Hurry, as and get some food, you mad lad." After the stream, I will consume calorie. Brilliant! There, I love how you, have your di- you have your dinner at fucking midnight. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> eaten all today. I, I've, I've not stopped. I've not stopped, so I haven't eaten a thing. I've drunk caffeine. I'm wired to fuck right now, but I haven't eaten a thing. But uh, Americans, is there a late night football game tonight? Because I because uh, I know it's Thursday and it's and it's Thanksgiving, but on Thursday nights there's usually a football game, and I I settle in to watch it. But with it being Thanksgiving, is there a late night football game? I don't know. I don't know. Would it be more awkward to say Big Trouble in Little Predator? <laughs> well. <laughs> oh my god. Either way. Um, what's the next one? Uh, yeah. Yum Yum Meet Him Up says, Mublishy. I received my long man plushie along with the Rags one last week. They're both mm. up on the bookshelf ready to murder art at a moment's notice. I, I've been sent loads. Of, I'm looking at a bookshelf one right now. I, you know what? I, I got given uh, this one recently. I don't know if you can share it, but as you'll find it adorable too. Uh, mm-hmm. I got a couple of door adorb things in adorbs. my hands right now. Yeah, that that picture right there. Mm-hmm. I just got it on on Twitter. Look at how adorable that is. Oh, I, I've just Aww. I've just retweeted it. I just retweeted that. Uh, That's really adorbs. I can't. I don't think I can bring that image up on the the chat though. That's the only thing for for everyone else to see. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I can share. Oh yeah, if you share it, actually, I'll, then everyone can see it for all its glory. Uh, here we go. Let me do 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 do. Just Boing. while he's doing that, I will say go. I've got I've got my critical drinker one there. They, they <laughs> nice. <sent me> the, <laughs> yeah, they've sent me the sample one, so that is going to be, uh, I think, on pre-sale uh, from the third of December. So it is really cool. I like it. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Hey, look at that. Yeah. Beautiful. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> Settling in, listening to some real BBC catch up. Getting ready yeah. to destroy art. Yeah. <laughs> um, Richie is my hero. Says, "What is the best quotable line from this film? As there are so many." Yeah. They got God time damn. to bleed. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the this will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. <laughs> I love them all. Everyone. Uh, yeah, what's the next one? Um, Dumars oh, I, says. I was going down on my. I was going down on my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, you got a big pussy. Jeez, jeez, you got a big pussy. So why did you say it twice? I, I didn't. It's cause of the echo. Billy's <laughs> yeah. reaction to make those jokes yeah. so much fun. Uh, 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 uh. Apparently, oh, yeah. uh, apparently, Sonny Lantham was an absolute <laughs> nut job on that movie. Um, <laughs> like everyone, everyone was shit scared of him. Oh apparently, right, okay. Apparently, yeah, just apparently a really like unstable actor and just yeah, oh. not the kind of guy you wanted to be around too much. Um, oh. And apparently they had to hire bodyguards, and it wasn't to keep him safe; it was to keep everyone else safe from him. Damn! What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What a guy! What I love his laugh and the predator copying it and pasting it when it's yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, 
Dumars says, hey lol, water heater goes tits up on Thanksgiving Day. No place to get a new one open today. Oh well, fuck it, let's get hammered. I'd, I'd say that's the perfect solution, to be honest. Yeah, that's really shit if like you don't have any heating or hot water in, no, in November. Um, Ivan Petrescu, happy Thanksgiving to you all. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Ivan. Thanks, man. Um, Ofer Nave says, Mauler, I enjoyed your response when Az made fun of the name Callum. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, y'all. May Angel spy on you out of concern for your safety. It's a, it's a strong name, a great name, I might even say. It's yeah. Name. <laughs> uh, John I didn't Forrest. Make fun of the name Callum, did I? I don't remember you saying. Did you make fun of it? I don't remember. I don't. I could never recall making fun of the name Callum. Must have, I guess it came from somewhere, but yeah, I don't know. Um, explain yourself, sir. Yeah, I can. Well, just give us more info. If that, that'd be cool. Yeah, uh, John Forrest, take my money, you bum. Thank you, man. I will. Uh, Blue fifty five <laughs> blue gave me ten dollars. Thanks, mate. Um, Krusty jugglers. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, you hellish heaps of heavy-handed hunkiness, Ooh. as you absolutely cut me up the, the other day when you watched Supergirl. No touching without <laughs> consent. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude, you really should... I, I thought you should have done something on that. The, uh, final, Supergirl. the final episode of, of, of Supergirl, yeah, and there's like an alien attacking one of the women, and she like, duck, like jumps to avoid it being hit, and then she's like, no touching without consent. <laughs> God. Girls get it done. Girls get it done. Well, lesbians get it done. Was, was that the, CW. Was that the final final episode of Supergirl? Final that was it. final episode. Yes. Done. Oh my god! Done. It's like the Thank end fuck. of an era. Uh, not really. What are you going to do when Batwoman comes to an end? As will uh, you be inconsolable? No. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> <laughs> Good chat. Thanks. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> some people will call it the end of batwoman i will call it wednesday <laughs> spoken like bison himself oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, come on we all know it we all know what's gonna happen i'm just gonna get bullied into fucking watching some other shit for uh people's entertainment that's the thing there'll always be more shit as always uh j mac here man give me a hundred dollars thank you my friend um happy thanksgiving gents one of our many excuses to indulge in gluttony as if you need an excuse <laughs> i'm gonna crack a bottle of McAllen and smoke a cigar when the sun goes down that's oh. not a bad way to spend the day man hey jay dropped a hundred on our soup on our stream earlier so jay thank you so much dude that's really generous man thank you my friend um Night King says, Stan Winston Woo! came up with the iconic Predator design or redesign, and James Cameron gave him the idea from the mandibles on the plane ride to the set. Yeah, I was just mentioning that earlier. Fucking mm. legend. It's one of those great moments where just everything that you needed came together. Yeah. Um, Sam Winston. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Ubu Roy says, When I was a kid, I had to ride my bike for 30 minutes to the nearest video store to rent a VHS movie for one day. Uh, one day the store had a life-size cardboard cut out of the Predator. I was a scared little boy the entire ride home. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say you stole it. I was going to yeah. say it's a fucking legend. It's in my bedroom to this day. And I kicked it in his fucking balls. Yeah. <laughs> no, you show the Predator respect, that. It's cool. You put a little crown on it. <laughs> put a little crown on it. <laughs> King I, I want. The, I want the autistic Predator from, from the newest movie. What is <laughs> like, <laughs> We need uh, autism to, to evolve. Jesus, yeah. what? he's got the power of autism. I, I don't <laughs> think that's the power you imagine it to be. <laughs> just, just to make sure you guys remember, right? Like they retcon the predator history. It doesn't fight for the thrill or the sport. It takes DNA from the skeletons that it takes out of people to find. <laughs> uses takes that DNA. <laughs> and ah! Exactly. No, <laughs> no, no. I'm done. Thank you. Wasn't enough. They discover no. the aut is the next step in the evolution. So they need to take the spine of an autistic person. It's like who? What? Was? <laughs> what, what, what? Are you fucking with me? Why did you do that? It's it's funny. I say it like, and it's a surprise to a lot of people. It's like, yeah, it's good that people are forgetting that movie, I guess. But like, that's what it did. It tried to rewrite Predators. You know oh, when, when the, Pred you know when well, the Predator. 
you know when the predator actually reads someone's postal address and and then just navigates to their house because they can absolutely <laughs> understand how no. addresses work. That did not happen. That fucking happens, by the way. Watch my video on it, okay? I'll help you through all of the stupid <laughs> shit. <laughs> the, do, you, do you remember there's uh, he trick on, the little kid gets a hold of a predator mask, trick or treats with it, and there's this drug guy in like a yeah. pretty normal a neighborhood who just goes fuck you and throws a bottle at the kid and then the mask automatically launches a plasma caster and blows the guy up with his house yep and that's funny because like this com- this kid just committed murder it's baffling like it, it's totally shane black it didn't surprise me i just wish that uh i don't know everyone was very excited that he was doing it because they were like he'll he'll nail it guys it's like did did you like the predator dog that the guy shoots in the head with a bolt gun and it becomes like a retarded predator dog that's mm-hmm. like your friend now? <laughs> yep, that was a great little <laughs> plot point. It literally saves the day uh, as for reference. I want to say this as quickly as <laughs> possible just to see your face. The predator dog is bolted in the face, goes uh, retarded and thus swallows a grenade and vomits it in the finale, which is used to kill the boss predator. He's not lying. That's literally what happens. What? Whoa, 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 how long has the grenade been in its mouth? Well, it, it, it's not active, right? So it just eats the grenade and then manages to get to the finale with every other character and vomits it out just in time for them to use it on the main predator. <laughs> it's very satisfying. <laughs> it's just like, part, of, part of Azzy's soul just died there. <laughs> Listen, I'm more than happy for that movie to be memory hold. Like... It's just, I guess, when you remind people of what happened, and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> it's like, yes." What, what movies when, have we when done? The predator like slices a guy's arm off, and then like in the back of a truck, and so the driver's like, "Is everything okay back there?" And the predator just like gets to the guy's thumb like that, and then just holds the arm out through the the back of the seats, so the guy just sees the arm, giving him the thumbs up, and he's like, "All right, everything's cool." Yeah. Like, how would the predator even know that thumbs up is a thing? That, that you can do. Oh, it's just fucking chew me. <laughs> like, there's times when I, I watch movies like that, and I'm like, I want a bolt gun to the head to become retarded, so I'm just a happy dog type <laughs> thing. <laughs> I, I'm so glad I I haven't seen this film. <clears throat> um. Ackles Floozy says, Drinker, you, since you sometimes bring in fans to discuss movies, I would love to go over The Mummy with you. They always make my popcorn taste better. The Mummy is a great movie. It is. Just yeah, fun, fun as fuck. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect description. Just fun as fuck. I do I do try and bring people on occasionally, so I'll, I'll see what I can do. I even quite uh, like The Mummy Returns. I think that's pretty fun as well. But... Yeah. I like The Mummy. Maybe not The Mummy 3. <laughs> It one's great. No. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's a bit, bit, bit much. Um, Charles Hurst says, Great to see you guys. Just wanted you to know that Faye is a lesbian. I see no problem with this. Cheers. Oh, Jesus. Just fuck off. I mean, the question is, do you get to see <sighs> boobs? Uh, no, in Cowboy Bebop, no. Well, um, yeah, but not like any of the major characters. There's like a, there's like a drug place where they've... Uh, uh, sewn shut people's eyes and they're oh. naked and they have to work so they're all naked uh, uh, and that's that but it, it, you know nudity can't save cowboy bebop live action and turning fey gay is stupid and then people it's then some I don't know which you stupid publication they did they said something like uh, phase the first hints of phase uh, sexuality in the live action cowboy bebop are when she's with uh, the the gender swapped character who she was in love with uh, in the anime or she, who or who she at least fell for in the anime but that was a dude who she fell for and in the <clears throat> live action they changed it to a female that was playing her mum. So were they yeah. the intimating that you should fancy the mum? Ah, it's fucking stupid. I got a question. Oh no, here we go. Um it keeps jumping around. I keep missing it. Jump around. Yeah, here we go. We're gonna get to see female predators in the new movie. That's what yeah. I want. In fact, I want to <laughs> see two predators fucking. Predator <laughs> I've never seen that on screen before. 
Uh, no I, saw, I, saw, I saw an image of like the the female predator. I've seen an Im image of it. Like predator boobs. Like, that that seems weird. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> predator boobs. <laughs> oh man, remember when Discovery showed Klingon boobs? Uh, I'm trying to forget it. Uh, Brenton Palmer, fuck yeah, this will help me defeat the man flu. Can't wait for the Hot Shots 1 and 2 mega stream. Drinker and as plushy when? Muller and Rags need company. <laughs> well, yeah, as I said, like the, the drinker plushie is, is going to be available soon. There you go. There's a sample of it. <clears throat> and we anyway. are going to be in talks with the people very soon. We're going to get an as one. We need Can we get Friday flushy. Night Tights? Friday Night Tights one. I'm also probably going to do one for my channel as well. Just nice. In general. Um, loyal Fan says, Peter Cullen, the voice of Optimus Prime, did the growl of the Predator, inspired by a childhood memory of a mud crab baking upside down in the sun. What the fuck? Wow. <laughs> really? Well, I hope that's true. The sound, we didn't even mention, really, that the sound of the Predator's like little snarly growl thing is fucking awesome as well. <sighs> Um, yeah. you could, yeah, that's close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a difficult one. It, it feels like it's loads of different animal sounds mashed together, like in post. I don't think oh, yeah, sorry. Like... You, I was, I meant the clicky thing. Oh, that, yeah. right. Sorry. Which is really cool and spooky. It is, yeah. Um, G Virus says, Hey, lol, look at always looking forward to each of your channels just to get through the day. As cut back on the junks shows that crap will cause heart attacks. On the junk, on the junks, yeah. I think it just means shitty shows, junk shows. Oh, no, I, <laughs> I need no, it. That's, that's how I need to go. I need to go, <laughs> serving, to go serving my community. <laughs> Just you uh, salute in your deathbed as you're watching the last episode of Batwoman. Like, <laughs> great, he he died doing the things he hated. <laughs> will we actually live to out? Uh, will we outlive Batwoman though? That's the, that's the question, dude. I'm pretty positive even I'm going to outlive Batwoman. Imagine you knew going ahead that they've like approved seasons like four, five, six, and seven or some shit. You'd be like, oh god. Well, I mean, we've hit the mid-season. Uh, finale seven episodes gone and uh every well every season the other two seasons had already been renewed by now so uh batwoman's now sort of in with the uh the mess if you know what i mean it's now like yeah. i think part of the possibilities and i'm not saying that it is going to get cancelled i think it's actually going to get renewed for a fourth season believe it or not but I do think it's going to get renewed for a fourth season. Uh, but it, I think it's I think it's in a position where it, it uh, it's it you know it could be one on the block. I just I can't imagine what argument you could possibly give to like keep this show going. You know, if Lesbians. you were hauled into the, the in front of the board um, at the CW, it's like okay, why why should we renew this show? Uh, it's like we <laughs> the tax write off. Yeah, I, I can only assume that's what it is. Some kind of like weird money laundering scheme. Yeah, like we're getting well, we're pulling in a solid hundred thousand viewers per episode. I don't know, man. Ah, it's a good point. What are we on now? Okay, I think we should have the final uh, ratings in for this week's episode now. Uh, let's have a look. Confirmation should should be through. Is it? No, confirmed, still not in yet. Okay, damn. Uh, what was it last week? Point <laughs> four uh, <laughs> zero nine. Fucking hell! With a with a demo of point zero eight. Dude, it's just gargling on its own blood now. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I mean, the the, the rating doesn't matter. Well, the 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 viewing figures don't really matter. Uh, comparative to the ratings, it, it's uh, sorry. Comparative to the demo, it's the demo that's the important, the the, the important aspect here. And the the, the demo is down uh, thirty one percent on last season. <laughs> I just imagine how demoralizing it must be working on that show. 
<laughs> just knowing that you're involved in this piece of garbage that nobody watches. Uh I it's it's weird. I mean, you know, we had all the Ruby Rose stuff recently with her shenanigans and uh, saying this stuff that went on and all that kind of jazz, and then that's kind of died down a little bit now. Ruby Rose was threatening to release the emails between her and Caroline Dries. I would love to see it. I oh, genuinely yeah. would. Um, I bet there's some fucking shit that is going on. Um, Big Daddy MRI here says, Hail Drinker, Moller, and Az. Great panel and enjoying the stream. Cheers. And to the chat, if you celebrate Thanksgiving, then cheers. Enjoy the uh, trip to Fan Coma. Be safe and thanks. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Sweet. Uh, Rob H says, Good afternoon, drinker, long man, and as. I'll have to watch the re upload of this one, but I hope you guys have a blast and a good weekend. Also, maybe consider making as a co host. His loud ass laugh makes my energy to 11. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Louder. Yeah. George says, They've had the predator, if not for that damn pig. Uh, Also, uh, yeah. Best movie jokes ever in opening and sorry, in ever in opening and echo. Hmm. I assume they mean like how it the vagina jokes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, right, go yeah. Because there's a vagina joke right at the beginning, then there's the echo vagina joke later. Yeah, it's like I wish you had sm- <laughs> sorry. He's like a like a little pussy. She's like me too. Mine's <laughs> me as big too. as a house. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> That uh, one Billy did not laugh at. No. He did not. He didn't appreciate that one. No. Um, Arc Winder says, Hey, everyone. Uh, question to Drinker and Mauer. Have you ever discussed your different takes on Mando and the Snyder Cut? If so, any unique insights? Um, I don't know if we've... We, we haven't done it on stream, really. I think... we Mando'd a bit, haven't we? But I don't... Uh... Well... Possibly... I think I we've, we we've both had a good laugh at the Snyder Cut, I think. I love the well, Snyder Cut. Well, I, was gonna say, I think we've got... I think it's absolute dog shit. As thinks it's really awesome. And you're, like, in the middle, right, Drinker? Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of... I'm like, yeah, it's 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 definitely a, a flawed movie for sure, but I prefer it over the Whedon Cut. <laughs> there I think you that's, go. that's where I say. <laughs> it's <laughs> an echo chamber. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we, we all got a different take. I don't think we've had a stream discussed with that aura. Oh, Mando. I think because um, I remember your comment section, Drink, because we gave you the clips from us before we'd even given our coverage for uh, Mando. We we were very unpopular that day. Everyone was like, EFAM doesn't enjoy anything. They can't just accept that Luke with his lightsaber is a bit of fun. It's like, I hate them. We were like, yes. Yeah, oh, daggly. who was the... But that, that was really... Yeah, but it was, it was interesting to contrast that, wasn't it? Because it's like, you guys... You weren't so much mocking it as just being kind of analytical about it and, you know, questioning how this came about and stuff. And then contrasting that with, like, I think Star Wars Theory and a few other people who were, like, openly crying. Yeah. And, you know, it wasn't to mock either side or, or anything like that. It was just to say, like, wow, like, people have intensely different reactions to this. And it's a lot of it's just down to emotional connection to it, I suppose. Is that to Luke? Yeah. 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 yeah I, I shed a tear. I couldn't, I shed a tear. We were all well, a lot of people. I didn't think I was going to get emotional. Um, but uh, I don't know when they when he pulled his hood back. I just I just kind of got I got emotional. I think I just my feeling at that moment was just oh, it's nice to see a good version of Luke again. <laughs> that, that that's nice, you know. Uh, well, yes, I guess, I guess like, when you watch, sorry, go on, Mark, you go. I was going to say quick, like to us, it was the demon that is Disney holding up the puppet of Luke and being like, "You remember this, right? You guys like us now." Like, mm. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I totally get that. Uh, and in actual in actuality, you, you're most likely correct based off um, Pablo Hidalgo's reaction to Star Wars theory. Um, there, so, there's yeah. uh, I'm just going to say it. There is one of life's absolute fucking bell ends. Oh, it's hey, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just, uh, a, just, he's just a piece of fucking shit. Yeah, it's just like, why take that away from someone? Like, if they have that reaction, like, you can, you know, you might have a different reaction to that piece of media. You don't need to mock them, though. It's just like, nah. But this is part of the organization that's trying to 
elicit emotional <laughs> reactions from people and then it happens and it's just like yeah it's not yeah. <laughs> it's just like fuck off pablo you fucking no mask fucking virgin ass dickhead but yeah Mahler, um when you when you're you know to see that reaction that you had to to look i'd be really interested to get your reaction to like ghostbusters afterlife oh wow in that case yeah um, mm-hmm. I'd have to see it because I can't say from what you guys have said. I, I can't, you know, you need to see it in action, sort of thing. And yeah. so what Chaz is like, Mola said, tearing up means there's something wrong with you. It's like, nope, never said that, considering I tear up on a lot of content. Uh, so it's a lot more complicated. I just, um, I think we should try and hold back on rewarding Disney for creating something meaningful when all they did was take, could literally have been a hot toy and walk him through a little, little, uh, you know, hallway with some robots and you could t- hit them over it's like that i have no fucking clue what luke was doing there i was like oh hi and he's like destroyed the robots and no questions are really asked like yeah i just didn't think it was very good at all hey here, here's the thing right if last jedi hadn't existed or say it had been good and it done luke justice mm-hmm. uh, the the reaction to this would have been nothing it would have um, just been like oh that's cool but I, I think, mm. like, the fact that we, we saw Luke so mistreated and just, you know, killed off in, like, the worst way, to, to get this, I think for a lot of people, was, like, their redemption arc, almost. It was like, ah, this this is a chance to see the character in his prime again, and that's mm. that's what it played upon. Yeah, I, I Luke's my favorite Star Wars character. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've always, you know loved him as a character so just to see that in the the last jedi that that bastardization of him was just so yeah i i but even when he was going through the ship you know swinging his sword um i still didn't i still didn't kind of believe that i'd be luke i'm like oh no you know these are all these are all deflex you know the with the glove and the dark you know this this is all deflection um and then, so when he when it pulled back his hood and it was actually confirmed as Luke, I was I think maybe that's why I had more of a an emotional reaction because I thought the whole thing was a bait and switch of of what who the Jedi was going to be. Yeah, it's always surprising just like when a little show like that suddenly goes big and then brings in a character like Luke. You almost think like no, he's too big for like what you're doing in the Mandalorian. Yeah. Mm. You know, and and. Yeah, I suppose that was the, the the unusual aspect of it. It's like, oh wow, he just seems really not out of place here, but it's just I didn't think you'd have the balls to bring in someone like him, I suppose. And it was uh, Mark Hamling in costume as well. It was, yeah. Must have been as nice for him. Um Uh I just I wanna just remember uh Mark Hamill to 80 83 and then we'll call it quits sounds fair no no <laughs> no let's go through the 90s with the joker uh since as soon as tw- what year was twitter created that year whichever the year twitter was created on that's the year that mark hamill died i i think from 2016 onwards that's when he had his problems <laughs> on twitter yeah i mean yeah for obvious I, reasons i just remember a few years ago i don't know six seven years ago um i i got a an r2d2 easter egg for christmas it was just like chocolate you know molded in the shape of r2d2 and i just uh took a picture of it and added mark hamill in and he fucking liked the picture and he's like oh what a lovely guy <laughs> you know when he tweeted out like missed opportunities with all the cast back together for the sequels i was like you bad lad tweeted yeah. that out but then he'll also didn't he tweet out at one point like was it s- someone related to Trump was dressed up as a stormtrooper and he was like disgusted or whatever like it was literally like oh, trick or treating just, like Mark this, calm down this this was I think this was the problem with him because like after Last Jedi like I followed him on Twitter and I was like oh I'm interested to hear what he's gonna yeah. say like is, is he gonna like bite back at this movie or whatever um, and it was just non-stop politics like that's all he talked about um mm. on, and it just totally wore me down and i was i just after like a week or two i, I just thought nah i can't deal with this anymore it's just too um unrelenting um so yeah 
but yeah, he just he would not quit. Like he had the, one of the worst cases of TDS I think I've ever seen. Yeah, him and George Takai are like the crazy twins. The TDS yeah. crazy twins and it's it's uh you just I feel as I feel though I don't know I think this is obviously vain uh in vain but I just feel like if you could just if I could just sit down with you for 2 minutes Mark and just say you know just just stop that just just <laughs> stop stop it you know don't you don't you got there's loads of people that love you there's there's no need for this craziness you you, you could do other things you could be creative you know put your energy elsewhere shut your toilet down give it it's give just, it to you give it to your manager to look after it's the same thing you always get with actors in situations like this where you just you just want to say to them you're a fucking actor okay just talk about the entertainment industry talk about films you're not a political pundit nobody cares about your political views that's not why they follow you. That's not why they listen to you. Yeah, you're you're under no obligation to to share political stuff, and all it does is divide people who would otherwise just be in support of you. Well, that's the you thing, know, man. Just it's, let it go. We're at the point now where it's less to do with like keeping yourself most of it's like please, because I already know what you're probably gonna say, and it's gonna be really lame, especially lately with certain events. I just don't oh, want yeah, to know yeah, her yeah. because I'm going to be like, no, not you too. Uh. I think, yeah. yeah. Mauler texted us at like five o'clock in the morning on Monday, I think it was. And uh, I was actually awake. So I responded and we were both kind of like talking about Twitter and what was going on after the recent uh, verdict. And we were both yeah. like, I, I just can't go on right now. I can't. I just can't. Yeah. It's, it's I don't, I don't blame you. Crazy. It yeah, might be there the was, there was one for me because the the lies, man. They, they, these are getting to be extreme. Yep. Well, it, did, did the Washington Post deleted their tweet today about the um, the recent incident uh, where they said where they said uh, you know something something along the lines of uh, six six people were were killed uh, in a a tragic SUV incident yeah it's never a terrorist attack when when they don't want yeah. it to be but um no i was going to say as well like the guy that you can always rely on to have shit takes and stuff like this is like pedro pascal oh, who who just yeah like do you and not do you not recognize knows. the people that you're you're supposedly claiming to support they're not <laughs> they're not good people mate that's the kind of shit you'd write in a parody. You'd have a sketch show. It's like, isn't it funny that when people celebrate certain people, yes. they don't realize it's this person? It's like, no, it happens. It's not even parody. It's just that's just what's happening. I know, yeah, and I don't know if it's just sheer ignorance. It's like, nah, I just saw the like the, the the headlines of the case and just thought I need to weigh in on this one, or like <laughs> just willful, like I'm just going to completely ignore reality here and just obey the 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 rules of the cult or whatever. I have no idea, man. But honestly, what a shithead. Well, yeah, uh, both and this, him and, and Mark Ruffalo, they're both tapped. And you know how it works, like we say, separate the art from the artist, but your brain works the way that it does. And when you see them, you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, there it's just are. you, you insufferable twat. <laughs> yeah, it's this fucking idiot. Oh, man. Anyway, I don't want to go too down, too far down that yeah, road. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ranting for hours. Anyway, Predator. Uh, <laughs> we're shopping, we're yeah, shopping Predator. for black pills at the moment. No, no, no. Yeah. Um... Yeah, what's this? Uh, a Canalist says, Hail Drinker and Mauler and Az, kind of surprised you invited a New Zealander rather than a Britisher for an all-UK panel. <laughs> you well, fucking like it. Diversity higher, isn't it? Oh, uh, there's always, you, I like just, to there's always, there's always a token. Um, <laughs> Kevin S says, not a big fan of gore, but I love Predator and yes, Predator 2. That's fine Is by that? me. Um, Dumars, Predator movies are like Immortals. There can be only one. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I agree. Oh, that's coming soon as well, isn't it? Fuck. Highlander remake. Yeah. No. <laughs> Please just leave it alone. You um, can't. It must all be destroyed. All. Totally, yeah. Like, we're, we're not going to stop until we've annihilated every fond memory you have of movies. Oh, yeah. This is why I'm begging for Alzheimer's. 
Give me that mom timers right now. Go, go, go. Yeah, you can like rewatch Predator and every time it's new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, there are benefits. Yeah, totally. Do you want to see? Do you want to see the last Jedi as? No, don't let him. You have a recorded message from yourself saying, "As I know, you're curious. I know, yeah. but yeah. Stop. <laughs> there, there is only three stars. <laughs> well, I won't go into that debate with this audience. Uh, there is only one <laughs> Matrix film. There is only just do like that. Just I enjoyed that. Like that. From uh, I can't remember if it was one of his Gary's videos, he was talking about different or what about maybe his streams but he said like there's only three indiana jones that he, blah, 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 that he went there's only three star wars six for some yeah. people <laughs> 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 that's why i'm not getting into that one again <laughs> uh Splor <laughs> says uh, cheers from the u.s thank you for keeping cinema real i'm doing my best but man it's getting pretty unreal these days um john patterson says did you know that Pierre Optimus Prime Cullen did the sounds uh, for the Predator um, sound effects? Yeah, we, we got that already, I think. Um, Armando94, this film is the first film that I can recall my granddad uh, showing my brother and I. We were too young at the time, but man, we can definitely quote the hell out of the movie. Love your content, drinker, hi, Mauler, and as. Thank you hi. very much, Armando. Um P- Penis Von Lesbian says, is it just me or does the Predator look like em- Emily Deschanel? <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I'm going to have to look her up. She's pretty. I think I'm thinking of the right person. Holy shit. Uh, no, the Predator doesn't look like her. Yeah, she's, she's pretty. She's, she's all right, yeah. Yeah, um, she'll do. She's got a okay. She's got a jaw. She's she, yeah, a yeah, bit square. Okay. She's got a, she's got a lantern jaw. <laughs> but what can you do? Sometimes women yeah. are like that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not quite. It's, it's not quite a teal jaw, but you know it's. No. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I start. I watched a bit of like the the new <gasps> Masters of the Universe, like the part two. Uh, fucking no! <laughs> it's. No I, more. No. Ah, uh, yeah. It's. It's. I don't even think it's hitting any. T- I don't think anyone's fucking watching it. It's not hitting Netflix top tens by the looks of it. And no, I don't know. I don't know if I'll bother reviewing it. Even it's not. It's not worth it. Notice how they didn't go out with um. Any but uh, somebody in the chat said I I hate as. What I. Happy Thanksgiving, and I hope you have a lovely day with your family. <laughs> Uh, uh, but you know, like, there wasn't any promotion for part two. It was just like it's out. And we're like what? There we go. That's it. Settled. <laughs> yeah, that's that's there you go. yeah. Correct. Um, what's this? She no, does look like a says, predator. I love as stop being a fucking sycophant. Jesus wept. Have yeah, some you can't do that. Chat, just nothing. Chat stop. Just say nothing at all. You'll win there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't feed the troll. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, I'll just I'll do a couple more because I don't think I'll get through them all tonight. Um, but CJ Bruskin says, "Was Predators really that bad of a film? It just kind of seemed more forgettable than anything the Predator accomplished." Um, yeah, I mean it's it's better than the Predator, that's for damn sure. But yeah, it just came across as kind of bland and forgettable, and I, I couldn't tell you a thing about any of the characters in it. I mean, if you guys want to, I'd be totally up for watching it and doing like a stream on it if people want. Us to talk about it. I just don't know how much how much time we can get out of it. That's kind of you know. I don't know if we, if that's looking like an hour <laughs> about. If you guys want, it'd be worth talking about. I think maybe it's one I need to go back and rewatch because I think I've seen it like once when it first came out, and that's it. I just had no interest okay. in going back. But I'd like to refresh my like praise and criticisms of it. I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah, I just remember there was there's a minigun scene in it. And it's so shit because it's very obvious that the bullets are all oh. CGI'd. Oh, and it, no. I, I contrast that with the minigun scene from from Predator, which is just cinematic glory. Yeah, um, but, and it's just it it's the again a great example of like well you put CGI into a film rather than practical effects there, and if you do it badly, it's just got no weight behind it. But why is there a minigun? Because yeah. Predator. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's like, is it the Russian guy that has the minigun? 
Uh, yeah, he is, yeah. Does um, he speak like this in the movie with probably. broken, like, English? I cannot remember. I'm sure the, the actor is like a, a boxer or something, or a cage fighter or something like that. Mm. Like, he, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's... I can't remember the guy's name, but, yeah. Um... Yeah, we we don't celebrate Thanksgiving, no, because we're, we're British. We don't have British. anything to be thankful for. <laughs> we are about being miserable. <laughs> I just re- I just realised. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna all Brit cast again. We we based our turkeys with rainwater here. It's all very depressing. <laughs> based them with tears. <laughs> tears, salty tears. <laughs> uh, one more here from George. Uh, Predator versus Fantasy Choice. So, for example, I would choose Ooh. Dread. Um, oh. So, uh, if you could be Predator versus anything. I'd be tempted with Batman, as lame as it sounds. I don't know. Just like the idea Damn. of Batman having to figure out how to beat him. I would say Greta Thunberg. <laughs> I don't know it's how long that could be. As. <laughs> it's a bit of a one sided contest, I would say. But no, no, it's a verbal <clears throat> fight. <laughs> uh, I would say Rocky. Um, I, I would like to see them go toe to toe in the ring. Oh, oh. Predator versus like, oh. Rocky's got a shoulder cannon. Yeah, I got to train harder for this one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Rocky steps into the ring and just gets blasted apart. <laughs> uh, I would like to see uh, Predator versus... I would like to see something like Predator versus Batman. I think that could be fun. Yeah, I think you have it. So the Predator's going after different people, and then Bruce gets aware of it. They have a first confrontation with Batman, narrowly escapes, and then Batman has to do his research, sort of be real careful, and then we could figure out a third act from there, I think. Or you could put a twist on it and go Deathstroke versus Predator. And Deathstroke's actually the one who is hunting down the Predator. Yeah, I could do. Well, I was going to suggest um, Daredevil because the Ooh. Predator is camouflaged, but he's blind, and so yeah. he can hear it. And so, could you you could perhaps do something with that where it's he's got an unexpected advantage over it because he can hear the the sound of it moving around. I don't know, maybe. It's an interesting one to have. You know, having somebody blind. Yeah. Um, yeah, like. An- Eternals, like they're deaf. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They made great use of that. And it, it's really funny because they were intentionally designed to be deaf, that that one. Like, I don't know, man. It seems like it'd be a real disadvantage in a combat situation where you have to stop what you're doing and, like, use, hind, you know, sign Actually, language. advantage because if... Anyway, next topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Diversity is our strength, Mauler. No, oh. no more questions moving on. Usually. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I was saying there earlier, I, I don't think um, I'd be able to get through all the super chats because there's just too damn many. But um, I'll do a super, ca- uh, super chat catch up stream in a couple of days to get through them all. Uh, but I want to say thank you. To my gorgeous co-hosts on this one, this has been great. Or my guest should I say? I can't believe Thank three you. Three hours has gone past. Yeah, what? Know. To be fair, we're talking about predator. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. We, we've gone off on tangents as well. Mm. But yeah, you guys, you guys, thank you for coming in and doing this one. It's been a great time oh. talking about this movie with you guys. Chink, chink. Thank you for yeah. having us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it's fucking it's, it's quite always happy a pleasure to come on. Yeah, see, we don't hate everyone. We don't hate everyone or everything, chat. There's movies that we love, and we, we do enjoy stuff. praising them. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> vast majority. That's all. Yeah, you just need uh, to stop us from saying that. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to everyone in chat. Like, I know, uh, you know, it's Thanksgiving and stuff, and a lot of you have probably got family and things, but. Yeah, I appreciate you coming in for this one. And hopefully, we've entertained you for a couple of hours. And thank you for all the super chats and for for all your donations and your generosity. It's always appreciated, and it really helps the channel. So, yeah, it's been great. Um, but yeah, for us, I guess that's all we've got for today. So, oh, no. we're gonna go away now. Boy, boy. <laughs>